Hey and welcome in Data Structure and Algorithm Analyze course. So are you interested to build applications that run faster and use low memory? So you come to the right place. I'm Hussein Arubai. I have a master in software engineering. I have worked as web developer for eight years in different companies and I have a lot of experience with writing code. So when I write code for myself, I don't care about time complexity and space complexity. But when I work for a company, they really, really care about these two points. When you go to job interview, all the question will be about time complexity and space complexity. Uh, this tutorial is very, very good for you if you want to go to job interview or if you want to write your code to be run faster and use low memory. So what I'm going to teach you in this tutorial. So first we will talk about different type of data structure like array, then necklace, then we talk about hash map, then stack and queue. We will not talk just general about how to implement this different data structure, but we will go in details about the time complexity and space complexity for every data structure and which one is better for your problem. And for example, why uh, uh, in some cases array is better than necklace and why, why in other cases necklace is better than array. And we'll go in details on how to find the complexity for all this algorithm. Then we will talk about algorithm. So what I mean by algorithm, I mean like when you do searching, you still do your searching in general, but how much time this will take? Uh, then we will discuss it and, by, and we analyze it by hand. Then we say, okay, this is not good. Let me go to another algorithm, name it binary search or interpolation search. And we discuss different algorithm and we analyze them and we find the complexity for every algorithm. Then we will talk about sorting algorithm, like uh, different types of sorting algorithm, like bubble, selection, heap sort, and selection, and quick sort, and which one is better to solve your problem. Then we will talk about graph theory, then about binary tree, then we talk about how to find short path between two points, like how Google map works, like Dijkstra algorithm and A star algorithm. Finally, we will talk the most important point for you is dynamic program programming. So that means how you take problem or bigger problem then you spread into smaller problem and you solve one problem then other problem then continue solving all the problems we will talk about different problems in dynamic programming then we talk about nd complete this is the most important question that you will get it and when you do go to job interview so why you have to take this course there is tourism make you take this course first thing when you go to job interview so all the interviewer read and from algorithm and data structure and bring a question for you from these two things. So if you take this course, I will promise you 80% from the question you will ask, you will find them here, exactly here. The second thing, if, you, if you're interested to write code, run faster and use low memory, so this course exactly for you. So what are you waiting for? Click on roll and enjoy with me. In this video, I will dive you on the course content and what you will learn in this course. So this code divided by sections. For every section you learn different thing. For example, you start with introduction, then what's called complexity, data structures, then we discuss different collections, then searching algorithms, sorting algorithms, trees and graphs, then path and dynamic programming and MP computer problem. For every problem, you will see a lecture for example one dimension array you see a lecture just talk about one dimension array and how it work and the details then the implementation of one dimension array then a real world interview question have been seen about one dimension array in amazon or google or microsoft one of the top tier companies for example for one dimension array it will show you this example it's been seen with amazon interview for find the longest sequence of ones with one flip and it will discuss how we how how I solve. So the idea behind this course is just not only teaching you the foundation of the data structure algorithm, also it will show you how the questions look like in a real world job interview with Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and these top tier companies and how you could solve this problem. So let's start video by video. Hey and welcome in the board. In this video, I want to give you some tips for your job interview. So, when you go to your job interview, one thing you have to know it, the people who do interview for you, they never care about how many programming language do you know, how much experience do you have, as much as they care if you are a problem solver or not. Because all the companies have problems and they want someone to solve these problems. 
how to solve these problems you have to know the data structure and algorithm you have to how to find best solution you have to like use a solution maybe that already exists like why you try to implement something already exists that people did before 10 years you have to know how to reuse it so this course is exactly for that thing so we will start talking in this course about specific topic like we'll talk about for example the hash map then we will talk about linked list and how we do implementation for visa structure in java then which one is better for that problem so when you go to the job interview we say hey this problem need hash map so i have to solve it in hash map or i'm sure hundred percent you will get a problem you when you go to the job interview you will get problems about tree so you say hey this problem also will be solved in this type of a tree like red black tree will solve this problem if you ask you for time complexity specific things so make sure from this thing and make sure you see the videos one by another see the 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 concept for every video and then talk, see implementation of every video so when you go to the end, your job interview you will be ready for any questions you may have let me start first install jdk so what does it mean jdk whenever you want to work with java you have to install jdk in your computer because jdk have all the libraries that will be using by your java app so to get started with jdk just uh, open google and look for jdk whatever your operating system be make sure you be in this website and click on this one there you go if you see i have different things here what i'm interested in is java jdk so just click on jdk whatever your operating system is just select accept and click for select your operating system what which one of them for example i am here in, in windows uh, this 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 operating system i just download this one if you are in mac os download this one linux download uh, any other of these so i click here and i will download it and i will wait for some time here we go here is it my file if i go to open i will go i will see the file or the an installation file that I, I could use it in my uh, for JDK so yes here is it to get started I just click double st click on install it even if you have different operating system you will go through the same process just install next 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 so just click then let me show you how what you will do here we go I will see this screen I click next then next if you see this is he say okay i will install java in this path see file program java jr8 make sure that from this path so uh, install it cool by the end you will see the screen that's mean he done you click close to make sure you or the java jdk is installed uh, make sure you go to the terminals look i will look for command windows command windows or terminal every operating system defined in different name for example in windows you have command windows in mac you have terminal make sure open the command windows or terminal and type just java then enter if you see this result that's mean you create the java is installed by any chance if you did not see this one and he say hey, i cannot I, uh, java is not defined as internal external command it's easy just go to uh, where when you where you start the java i start here here the java and this is when the java jdk make sure jdk not jre then go to bin take all this file path copy it click right copy and go to your computer click right properties then advance then from advanced environment variable then go to path look for path double click on the path and click in new and add this path and click save maybe you are using all version from windows so you will see that when you click on path you will see it in this way so it's easy also just go to the end of the path and add this sign then add the path so this sign you add it then the path for the java then you click save that's great then okay okay and now make sure you close the terminal and reopen it again so terminal or command windows reopen it again and uh, now when you type java you should see the result okay here we done and see you next after installing java jdk in our computer it is time to install the editor that we want to work with 
there is many editors we could use it for this tutorial like we could use uh, Eclipse or we could use NetBeans any editor you you feel comfortable with please go ahead and start with for this tutorial we use Eclipse so just in Google I will look for Eclipse and I will go to the Eclipse website so when I go to uh, Eclipse I will see this one just go to download packages and you will see this website or this one if you see I will select this type of Java Eclipse IDE for Java developer. Then I select the operating system, I select Windows. I will wait for Cine click download from here and I will wait for some time until he complete. After a specific time, you will see the screen. So he downloaded. I just opened the folder. I will see it in, in Windows. You will see it as uh, something like zip it file. You just need to click right on it and unzip it. But in Mac, you just double You will see Eclipse file and just you do double click on it and you open it. So because I'm um, in, in Windows, I'm just clicking on extracting this folder and I will wait for some time. As I told you, if you are in Mac, you will see it one file, name it Eclipse, you double click on it and you will take it in your desktop and you could start working on it. Let me wait for some time and get started. Here we go. Now I have this is Eclipse. So if you want to work with Eclipse, don't keep it in download. Just take it to any folder you want to work with, for example, in C or in D. I prefer to add it in D to avoid any any problems. So if you have like uh, some uh, setting in your uh, in your computer, then see this is the folder. This is your Eclipse. Just click on it and start working with it. Let me see at the final second to make sure everything is okay. Here we go, he will ask you for the default. I will say don't ask me again and keep all my file here in workplace. That whatever project I will do will go to that place. Yes, here we done and now everything is great. I have my project and if you see I close it, this is my development environment. I could click right and start creating my project. Here we done and see you next. Hey again, let me talk in this video about code complexity. Code complexity means how complex your code is. In code complexity, we have three different concepts. One, two, three. The first concept would be a uh, omega. Omega means how co your code will run in the best case scenario. So in the best case, how your code will run. The other concept we have it, which is the theta. Theta means how your code will run in average case scenario. That means it's not very good and it's not very bad in average how your code will run. The third concept you have it, which is big O. Big O, I'm sure you heard about it. That means how your code will run in worst case scenario. So in the worst case, how your code will run. To make these three concepts very clear, I would use a graph to undraw these three concepts for a simple example. So let me assume I have I have this line now here, the hair, and I would use the another line here. Okay. And removing this, I would have this one, we'll name it x-axis, and here we have in the top we have code complexity, or we could name it as better name will be for the time complexity okay time complexity complexity okay so let me assume here like in this point and uh, in the in the in the in the rule which is this point i would take different color in this point this is your code this is your code and i want to see how your code will run in a three different scenarios and three different scenarios mean in the best case in the worst case and in the average case so i would use three different lines one of them would be this one i will let you guess which is this one and this one and and this one so here will be if i just try to use a different color so here would be here where your code run in this scenario so I would assume you now know what the scenario. This should be the best case, omega. That's mean in the best case scenario, the code will take around. Let me assume, it take around in here one second. It take around one two seconds to run. 
here we name it average which be theta okay and theta again your code is still here but your code run in this scenario it take around three seconds to run the third one which is big o I, I think you already know what this concept is so this in this scenario your code took four seconds to run so for three different scenarios your, your code t took different times it's the same code but in the best case scenario it took two seconds to run in the average case scenario it took three seconds to run in the worst case scenario it took four seconds to run so it is same code but it could run for different scenarios differently which is this why we have these three different concepts of best case worst case and average case mostly 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 in our study or in our, as a programmer or as a software engineer we care only about the worst case scenario we don't care about how your code run in the best we always what we do we work for worse and wish the best that's our goal so to make this concept clear let me assume I have a simple array in this array I have multiple element and I want to search so assume you have a question is ask you search for number 10 in array array of five elements okay five elements in this case you will you will have an array in this case this is the array and let you have it this way uh, this way and going uh, divided as a five so let you say this is the first element this is second element this is third this is fourth this is fifth so this is the array that you search for the number let me assume the, the number of 10 it appear in three different places if it appear in three different places that mean you have a base case we have a, let me assume this one the number 10 is here you have here 3 4 8 7 and and in the base case you have that the top I will just let me just draw it the same way so it will not be it will be easy to track for you and for me let me just draw three different array for the way how we could find how could number 10 appear in three different scenarios in worse and bad and an average I would use three arrays that make it easiest for me to show you how the three scenarios could run for just one number or searching in one number in array so just one number I'm searching for it I could find it or I could search for three different scenarios so this one element and this one another element and this one another element and this one the last element that I am looking for so in the best case I would assume the number 10 appear here and I have here 3 4 and I have 8 7 the worst case number 10 is here and I have a 3 4 8 7 so it is number 10 but it appear appear in three different places it appeared one one time appeared here one time appeared here one time appeared here so if the question was search for the number sequential that means search your search should be I mean the way that you search for the number is sequential time like I I just that sequential mean one element by another we will get through this example so that means search let me just use the pen search sequential okay so in the, in the sequential I would use a different pen and this let you use a red or this color so in the sequential for first case i will go here and do is this 10 yes so yeah it is the 10 so this is the omega i find it from the best try and that is i find a number i'm done for other case if i get for the second one i just try sequential is this number 10 no then go here is this number 10 no is this number 10 yes so i find it after three tries okay I find it here from first try this is what we name it theta so it's not very bad and it's not very good 
The third case scenario, I just start here. Is this is this uh, a 10? No, this is 3. Is this 10? No, it is 4. Is this 10? No, it is 8. Is this 10? No, it is 7. Is this 10? Uh, yes. So I find it after 5 try. Okay. So this is what you name it big O. So there was a three different, still sequential search, still we searching for number in array, and still same array, but the number it appeared in three different places. So one time it appeared in the first element, one time in the middle, one time in the end. So that, that's why we have three concepts. We have uh, omega, theta, big O. Best case, mid average case, worst case. Why we should always care about worst case scenario why we should always care about this case because as you see like the number don't don't have to appear in the first location it appear in the middle and it appear in the end or code must must work all the time for this case the best and average we don't care about them we always again we work for worse and wish the best what we say just remember this and never forget it we work for worse and we wish the best. If, if, in, if in your search, the element appeared in the first time, that doesn't mean your code is running good. The same element may appear in the middle for the second try, and may appear in the end. So that's why we have these three different concepts, and that's why we always work for the worst concept. We try to make it better. We try to move it in this level or in this level as much as we could. So this is the three different concept of worst case, best case, and average case. Well, there is another thing I want to discuss the levels in this video. That's mean what the level I could have them in these cases. I would draw something because you will you will see these levels a lot for next upcoming videos, and they are same level. They will never change. It. I mean level of code complexity. Okay, so the levels is. First one is ve should be like very very simple, very very easy. You could find it from the first try, which is I would draw it here, very easy. If again this is x, and this is what this is time complexity. That we we here we no longer use one second, two second, three second. We give them a name. So this one we we could name it by big O, big O, four one. I find it like this is the sim the easiest one. The second one is that we go here and we name it uh, O of log n is, is like higher complex than O n. Then the third one should be O of what? O of n. Then other one would be O of n log n. That's right. n log n. And other level is O of what o of n square see we are going more complex the code going up more complex and other level is o of 2 of n and the other level this is so worse level which is o of n factorial okay all of the other time all our work we try to reduce the complexity we try to take the complexity down we try to move the complexity down I would give you a very very basic example and you see it in your daily life this example so the searching algorithm bubble sort bubble sort and usually it take n square to run so if i have sort elements the sort element take n square time to run so n square would be here so bubble sort is not a good algorithm for us to sort our element because we always try to take it down we always try to take the code complexity down O of n square is not good, so this is the bubble sort. This is for bubble sort, bubble sort. So if someone give you code, have a bubble sort and ask you to improve it, you should think in this case, if he ask you to improve it, you should think how you move the code complexity down, how you move it less. Maybe you move it to from n square to n log n or n or whatever. So for now, the available algorithm for sorting is the heap sort, the best one, which take this one, this time, which is n log n. But that's good. See, 
remove the complexity you just ch change the algorithm from bubble sort to heap sort you was able to reduce the code complexity from what from n o of n square to o of n log n which is a great like o n n square to o of log n if you did this thing in the code interview the code interview they, the, if the interviewer give you code as a complexity n square and you change it to n log n uh, i i think you did a great job so this is the three concepts this is how they works so for all upcoming videos we will discuss the code complexities for every data structure for example some data structure take n time to serve some of them and log in some of them like array take of one then we discuss some algorithms such as sort how bubble sort we replace it with a heap sort if we reduce the complexities how the trees take how much time and all these things that we'll discuss in the next upcoming videos for now we're done thanks for watching and see you in next video let me talk in this video about how we could find the complexity of a code so to find code complexity there are three rules we need to learn about the code complexity measurement first one if you see add operation subtract op operation multiplication operation or division or if a statement all these will take one step to run one step to run that means constant time we could name it C constant okay if you see in the code there is a memory access memory access and when I say memory access you could think about it as someone reading variable from the memory writing variable to the memory update variable from the memory all these take also one step to run so all these also take constant time to run if you see in the code there is a loop or there is call for subroutine sub protein subroutine mean faction or method this will take n step to run okay n step and you say name it n so loops always take n because you don't know how many elements in the well you know 1 to 10 but we define for we define a loop as you don't know for some scenarios for someone send the last element in the loop as a optional but subroutine we give it n for different reasons S because we don't know what happened in this what will happen in the subroutine so we by default we give that call as uh, n time sometimes the subroutine have only one call yeah that is you give it constant time but when you see a, a call for subroutine in the code you definitely give it n because you don't know how much time it will take when you see a loop you give it n when you see memory access or, or, or add subtract multiplication division if statement you give it constant time so very very simple a three concept let now let me test now your knowledge let me see how you understand this if i suppose i have integer sum equal zero then i have a for loop for i equal zero i less than n then I plus plus I wouldn't say I last I less than 10 because if I say 10 it will be constant I will say n so whenever you see this now someone asks you hey could you measure the complexity for for this code you say okay yeah it's not hard first line look to me it's just defining variable and accessing to memory location so I give it constant and because it's the first constant I give it C0 because if the code may, may have multiple constants so I'll give 0 0 Z1 C2 and the second line is just a loop and loop for our concept it take n time if I want to measure the complexity of this code I have C0 plus n then I say equal okay based on the big O definition we take the worst case so which one worse is the co worse or n worse no the n is worse so the code complexity here is n so again in the big o if we have multiple multiple options we add them we take the worst one the the highest one and we discuss previously how the highest should look like to you as a 
as a uh, as a researcher. So now if I or if I just try to make this example more complex, I try to say no. I would assume here in the for loop there is some operation, and in the sum I have some plus i. Okay. Now hey, measure the complexity. Again, the first line is still C0, the second line N, and this one is adding, the third line is adding operations, so because it add, it add, so it is constant time, so I say constant, I have 0, I should go to the next, which is 1. Now my code will be C0 plus N. But, now I have C1 is, is part of from the N. Whenever you have anything in the loop, it should be multiplied by the complexity of the loop. Multiply by C1. Why? Because it's part of from it. It's, it run exactly the same time amount of the loop run. If the loop run for 10, it will run 10 times. If run loop run for 100, it will run for 100 times. So now, what the complexity? I have to add. So I have left side and right side for here. So here I have C0 and I have N plus C2. Uh, C1, uh, so the complexity should be the highest, and the highest here is N multiply or N C1. C1 is always constant, so you don't take it, so you will take the complexity here still N. We did not change anything. We still have N complexity until now, but we add different variables here. Now, let me make the code more complex by saying, no, I would have another loop inside this loop before I do the add operation. That's mean hey, I want to add another loop before I do sum. That's mean yeah, okay. I would go with you. I say okay, I have another loop here. And inside this loop I have j equals zero, j less than n, j plus plus. And I have sum equal sum plus i multiplied by j. Okay. That's good. Now what's the complexity here? Okay. We go to the same concept. First line takes C0, N. The second line, this one again loop, it takes N time. This one constant takes C of 1. Now let me measure it. Just remember this one inside this one, and this one inside this one. That means this one multiply by this, and this one multiply by this. Anyone inside loop should be multiplied by it, by it. So you have C0 alone plus N multiply by N multiply by C1. So now what you say? You say, okay, C0 stay as it is. N multiplied by N will be N square C1. So C1 multiplied by N square. Now we go the concept of the big O. Big O, who's the worst? Is this one the worst or this one the worst? So definitely this one is the worst. So the worst is C1. Let me use the pen. The worst is C1 and multiplied by N square. Again, it's, con it's constant, we don't take it, so the complexity is n squared for this code. Let's go and make the code uh, more advanced. So I would say, okay, no, I don't care for this 3, 4. Now I would add another loop, and this loop have nothing to do with the previous loop. It's the independent loop, so which is supposed to be here. For k equals 0, k less than n, then I say k plus plus then I say sum equal sum plus k okay now measure the complexity okay first one zero this is loop should be n time this one loop n time this one constant c1 this one loop should take n time this one constant should take constant c2 because I have c1 I have c0 c1 I have should have c2 by definition, this is inside the loop, it multiply. This inside this one, it multiply. This one inside this one is multiply, and this one alone. So the, the code has three pieces. This piece, this piece, independent, and this piece. So this one should be C0. Should, this one should be N, multiply by N, multiply by C1. And this one should be N, multiply by C2. So if I just do it as a mathematic, I have C0 plus C1 multiply by N, multiply by n plus c2 multiply by n now let's go next c0 stay as it is c1 stay as it is n square here will be n by n plus c2 multiply by n now based on the concept of the code complexity who's the worst is c1 or c uh, c c0 or c1 n square or c2 uh, n so definitely this one is the worst so these two i don't care about them 
so the worst case for me here is c1 n square and this is constant i don't take it so the worst case for this code to only take n square time see the worst case we don't care about the, the small pieces we care about the worst place in the code how much time it will take to run so that's good for now i just that we take more examples if i just say no that we no, let me just clean this because that's a lot to clean one by one if i assume i have a if statement which is the last part in this section how i deal with if statement if statement mean mean i have someone define integer sum equal zero then he define a loop for i equal zero i less than n i plus plus then i say okay i have open bracket close a bracket for my loop in the bracket in the bracket i have if statement sum equal for example uh, f um, s s sum equal 10 i will do some operation which is sum equal sum plus 2 otherwise i would say sum equal sum plus i it's just just i'm i'm adding loop just make my code more complex and i want to measure the complexity this one first line will take c0 to run this is loop take n time this is f statement take c1 constant time this one again access memory take constant time c2 this one take constant time which should be what should be c3 all these three inside the loop that's mean three of them multiplied by the n and that one alone so i have c0 plus n the loop multiplied by c1 and let me assume this as one block and this one alone so the one block if you see this one inside this one any, anything inside the loop it will run only if the loop run if the loop did not run it will not run but by the end all the times i have the loop there so all the time the loop so, sorry let me make it clear again if i have a statement always we will check for if the sum equal equal zero so always we have a constant time c1 but c2 not necessarily have it all the time you may have it or may, may may not have it we may run this code and this one get executed and we may not so we just add it as a plus c2 so whenever you have if statement the content of if statement will be as a plus to the if statement and i have plus c3 okay now all this one c0 stay as it is this one n1 plus all these who's the worst just look through the code the c0 or n multiplied by all these definitely n multiplied by all this is the worst so n multiply by all these is just let me make it a pin and multiply by c1 plus c2 plus c3 and as we know the constant we don't take them so the code complexity here is n time to run just again just as a review whenever you have any memory access defined you just take constant time variable if statement constant time you have loop the loop will take n time to run okay even if so this is a big discussion you say hey what if this one have a number 10 i know this loop will run for 10 times yeah i know this is because you hard coded but definitely the loop should take n time people should don't know how much element should go through to search and in, in, in the real world scenario you say okay i'm searching for 10 numbers so I, okay the 10 this is like the big discussion i have in this course people say this you say okay why you are saying uh, loop always take n i for example I'm, I'm searching for 10 numbers i have 4 i equal 0 i less than 10 i plus plus i'm searching for example if i equal 3 you say okay this is constant this even loop but it constant time i know it take 10 times but you are searching for 10 numbers only in the real world scenario you, you, you don't supposed to know how many elements to search for i mean the big and the companies like google when they search for hundreds document looking for the information so always this one should be n in your definition even if constant i would say give it n time to run whenever you have loop 
you say this is n this is how we talk with your interviewer just don't tell him this is constant because you may not get the job so just make sure and whenever you use a loop say okay this is take n time to run so here we done thank you for watching and see you next let me talk in this video about data structure that structure means how we represent our data in better way so let me take a very very basic example to understand why we need a data structure assume you have five elements and you want to search in this element you want to provide algorithm for searching in these five elements and the elements you have them 10 5 11 2 and 6 one of your try you, you tries you try to uh, so add them in array like what we did here and you provide h you provide sequential search sequential search mean uh, you start searching from the first element second element third element four five just looking for the number that you are searching for this is how sequential element now let we try to do some studies let we think about okay you want to find you want to search here the number here we say you want to search for number uh, 11 here let we say how many tries after how many tries you find it so number 11 if I just change the pen I start one is the 11 no is this 11 no is this 11 yes so I find after three tries okay go next let we search for number six so on six you will say no I will let me just delete that and you say six you say one is this six no 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 you find after five tries say I find it after five tries I could try more you could say okay I want to try different number which is uh, let's say two so two in the basic concept if you try to search sequential is this two no 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 yes you find after four tries i find after four tries so this is the very very basic searching sequential algorithm now someone tell you hey could you try to make this better for me i feel having uh, this sequential search is maybe taking time so how you could improve this search for me how you could make the search faster like finding elements be faster in this case you need to think about different data structures so the data structure that we used uh, here it was simple array now you need to think about different data structure let me assume for now you don't know about trees but that we assume we use the tree and a tree is the way we represent a data as a tree so the first element which is 10 will be a node a root node will have a 10 any element be, uh, greater than 10 will go to the right side any element less than 10 will go to the left side so starting element by element what about 5 so 5 is uh, less than 10 so it will go to the left side I added 5 and then we go to 11 is greater than 10 it go right side it must be 11 now we go to the 2 is the 2 and uh, now we go to the next so is the two it, it, it do we do it in this way is two uh, greater than 10 no is two greater than five no so it will go to the left side of the five not the right side so it will go this side you don't need to care about how I build this tree but I just want to show you and because we will talk about this later on I have a two here and the six same time is the six uh, greater than 10 no is less than 10 is the uh, 6 greater than 5 no less than 5 to go this way 6 so this is very very simple way to represent hopefully to represent our data in the same thing the same data but we just in this time we just represent the data using a tree so the previous solution just just remember this is a tree how we represent the same five element as a tree and that side how we represent the five element as array now let, let do the same calculation what that we did it before which is finding elements so I will use rules to make my output nicer so and try to do it this way and definitely I have two columns here 
and pairs of one and number of tries okay so in this case I will have two things I have something I search for and something how many tries after how many tries I find it so starting element by elements we have them in the left side I have first 11 so looking for 11 11 is we start from the root we find it after first try because is the 11 greater than 10 yeah go to the right yeah I find it so I find it after one try so comparing with the previous one we find it in the list because here one here three tries good let's go to the next we have two more to search we have number six so number six how we could search for number six number six is number six greater than 10 no go to the left side is number six greater than five yes go to the right side is number six here yes I find it after uh, one two uh, oh, one well we could say one two try because two moves so I could use I find it after two moves okay and here is it I'm done with this number so the third number is uh, two the two so now I'm searching for two is two greater than ten uh, no is two greater than five no is this two yes so I find after two tries two lines so here I say I two now let you compare the two results and let's see some surprises so looking by to compare two results so this one the first one I find after one try I find it after three tries so one two three so I just make it down the second one I find after two tries he find after five tries so two two five wow the third number I find after two tries you find after four tries so two to four did, did the uh, uh, trees reduce the search yeah definitely is reduce the search so see if always is the trees faster so if this one finding three this one I find in one this one find in five this one find in two this one find in four this one find in two so it's much faster so I still what interesting here still I have same elements I didn't change I didn't change anything it's still I have the five elements here and still I have the five elements here but all what I did is just different way to represent the data but that make my search faster and this is the main idea behind the data structure it's just you structure your data differently to get results faster so here I reduce the search time complexity so uh, uh, and I also I was able to find the element faster and this is behind all the section or all the algorithms that we will talk in this sections if you don't understand algorithm you will see it in the real world application when we try to see which algorithm better fit for this problem here we done thank you for watching see you next come in this video I'm going to start with the top interview questions like you most likely going to see when you do interview and in, with a one of the big tech companies if you don't know me I'm a senior European I'm a senior engineer of one of the big tech companies and let's get started so and it's very very now and in the interview they want to test your math or your basic math so it can come in different ways maybe they tell you like you have a string like this one string of numbers and turn it to integer like think about this this is just a string one two three four and your output should be a number so it's similar to the implementation of this function in Java so in Java if you say integer dot parse integer it will take whatever string and convert it to numbers and it could come in different way they may tell you like hey you have a excel sheet if you think this one the excel sheet so a consider could be one b it's two and you know you have a 26 letter so z most likely going to be 26 and when you go aa it should be 27 and going forward 28 and going forward so they may ask you this they tell you like you have a excel sheet and you have a uh, characters and convert the character to number like for example if someone give you z you should return 26 someone give you aa you should return 27 ab 28 or whatever or they could tell you in this way so that we try to solve these two problems and see how similar these two problems are so 
when we talk about numbers so this is just a number like one two three four or you could say like one one thousand twenty five something like that okay and you want to implement a method that take this one thousand twenty five and return to you like when you run it to return to you as a number instead of a string so basically in the basic math the way we're going to solve this is we're taking them uh, number by number and what we do we multiply this one by by one this one by ten this one by thousand this one by oh, sorry this one by zero this is by one this is by hundred this is by thousand then we add them so the way it will look like we'll say okay this is the number i have it so i do have a uh let just let's do it this way i have a five multiplied by one and uh, I have 2 multiplied by 10 and I have uh, 0 multiplied by 100 and I have a uh, 1 again multiplied by 1000 and I just add them so you have here a 1000 and here you have a uh, 0 and here you have a uh, uh, 20 and here you have a uh, 5 so 1000 plus 20, 1020, 1000 plus 20 plus 5, 1025. So this is how you do it. So you just go through them one by one from the left to the right. We multiply them by 1, by 100, by 1000, uh, by, by 1, by 10, by 100, by 1000. So if you see like how we increase, like 1, 10, hundred thousand ten thousand so you could you could just represent this one as a power of uh, 10 for the power of i and i could be start from zero so when i is zero it will be uh, one because 10 power of zero be one so 10 power of zero is one then to what went to be one 10 power of one is 10 and 10 power of to is 100 and going forward okay so they get started try to solve this problem and we may face another issue which is like how we can convert this one as a character to the equivalent uh, number we go through the asking but they just let's, let's implement the method so my method will be a very similar to this one so i will name it uh, i will name it integer return to me parts in it it will receive a string of whatever number as string okay or it could be a text okay it could receive a text and the text should be just numbers that's my assumptions and this method to since i'm in java to call the from here i would just say okay i would do new name of the class then the name of the method i mean this is how we deal with it with java so i i should whatever i pass to this method it should return should print the number for me so as we say we will start from the last digit to the first digit so what i will do i will do for loop maybe i mean you can use it uh, you can use any any way you want if you, if you try a for loop you say integer i equal to the text dot length minus one then i minus minus oh, sorry i greater than or equal zero then you say i minus minus and here we are going to go from the last to the end from the last one to the first one so we define a car we call c will be whatever text i need to get the character at specific location so character at index i what that mean I mean like if you go back to this one the uh, first time i will take five as a character two as a character zero as a character one as a character well why it's a character well come on it's a string since it is a string every one of them considered as a single character you cannot treat it as a number it's just it's just a character so now okay we got that character we say it, we will sum them so i should have something like integer sum equals zero because this will have a total result and I should return it from here, okay? This is what I'm returning. So, this is my return result. And 
However, I need to just like at every point, as I said, when I get like first one five, I should multiply it by something power of the i. But here the i is just coming opposite. So we could just say integer power level. Uh, we could name it as uh, we start from what? Start from zero, is that right? And for the for every character, we will say some some plus equal uh, whatever the power. So you could use a math this way dot power dot and uh, the power here for math will be ten power of the power level this one and this one will be multiplied by the character so for now let's say c but we cannot do c because c here is a character i think here i have something something missing with the math so undefined math somehow so i will just it should work but let's 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 fix this part first so first i have a 10 for power level, power level of, and for the level and every time i just increase the level that's right so when the first one i multiplied by 10 power of 0 then 10 power of 1 then 10 power of 2 10 power of 3 and that's exactly what i want to do here like 10 power of 1 10 power of 2 10 power of 3 10 power of 0 10 power of 1 10 power of 2 10 power of 3 and going forward so beside that what I said, I said I have five, but five here is just a character. And I want to deal with it as an integer. And how we do that? Well, well, the ASCII code is the easiest way for me. If I assume my digits is 0, 1, 2, 3, until 9. So I, mul I do like, and I know the ASCII code for everyone, is it? Like, most likely this one has specific ASCII code. If this one, for example, 55 this one should be 56 this one should be 57 58 so i i subtract any digit you send me from zero so what that mean i mean okay i will just whatever digit you send me i will try to get the ascii code for it and subtract it from the ascii code of zero as a character so well you send me zero it will be zero minus zero it will be zero if you send me one let us assume the ascii code for one will be uh, uh one will be one minus zero one and that is we'll, 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 we'll see the ascii codes in seconds i think here i have a simple math problem and i think i somehow i need to to pour that library so let me check i well i don't think there is any issue just the issue with the class name it's just name it we name it math equation because you cannot have a class name similar to the class the system class name so under this one i will just uh, do a rename for it name it uh, this one and i should be just fine so i will i will just run it now i should i should have oh this one should be a math equation as well so I should have whatever output I expect. So here, uh, this one. Well, for sure, this one will not be. Uh, yeah, I mean, just show to me like 1,000. Uh, this one, uh, 1025. M maybe you want it in the. You want to show uh, them internal screen to make it clean. They just don't care about this one. It's not just for me. To show to you in the diff in the in the uh, in the debugger so this here is it so yeah you have a 1025 okay so uh i mean try a different number so one whatever just try any number and just like run it it should be able to convert it to to integer without without any doubt so uh, uh but how does that happen as i said it's just very simple you just we take the string we send it to this function and what this function does it just go through them from the left to the right and multiply this one by 10 power 0 10 power 1 10 power 2 10 power 3 and add them and beside that since i have a I have it the character as a 
set rank uh, as a character, the number I need to convert it to ASCII code, so I get whatever, and that as ASCII code and math subtracted from zero. So let me just uh, very, very simple, simplify it very, very I mean, simplified to you. So if I say integer, I say the start, and this one should be whatever the ASCII code here, okay? And I should define like integer, and this is just to simplify the process if someone like have a sheet to understand this part. So you should say end, and I should always subtract end from start. So end from uh, start, okay? And let's just like to put a break point here. Hopefully I can. So I would just like debug. I try to understand the values. So here, if you see, I mean, I need to step over, maybe step over. So you see, like, see zero to consider forty-eight, okay? And whatever you send me as a first digit here is one thousand one or thirty-three, so it should be three. So three in the ASCII code will be uh, fifty-one. So fifty-one minus forty-eight will be three. So that's how it works. Okay, I'm getting the ASCII code for 0, which is 48, and the ASCII code for 3 is 51. 51 minus 48 is a 3 in the digit. And that is. That's exactly what I want to show you. Same thing for the next and next and next. So this is the first question. If someone asks you, like, okay, I give you a number. Well, what about the other one? What about that someone try to just trick you and say, try to convert the question, telling you, oh, yeah, I'm giving you, uh, this is like Excel sheet, and if I give you A, you should return 1. I, should, I give you B. Two, I give you C, you should return like three. If I going forward, Z, 26, and more, 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 more. Well, what do we change here? Well, we're not going to change a lot. So I think about it here. If I just here, I send someone sent as A. Well, if A goes here, I'm still should treat it similar. Instead, here I'm subtracting, I'm starting from A minus one. So everyone should get subtracted from A minus one. Instead, uh, subtracted from zero. I mean, why is that? Because like, how to get A? Well, it should be ASCII code for A minus ASCII code of previous one. So, so I could say like, if this one like, for example, whatever, 65, should be minus 64, so I get one. Okay, I could subtract it from A plus one, you could do that, but I mean, to be more, more like, more clear, you say like, uh, so, uh, ASCII code for A minus ASCII code A minus 1. So it will be this one instead 0. This everything, consider everything in the capital letter should be A ASCII code for A minus 1. Okay, so whatever. A has ASCII code subtracted from A minus 1. And that is. So let's just try it. And we, we are missing something, but we will solve it in a second. So proceed. I mean, this one. I would just. Try to just run and see what I get from A. Oh, well, well, I, well I, I know there is have a level should not be 10 because digit I have 10 digits. I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 10 digit. While in the character I have 26 characters. So I should I should multiply it for 26, 4 power, whatever. So just like run it please and show me what you want to show me. Sometimes this IDE is just crazy. Here you go, it just show me like one as a A. Well, if I say then Z should turn me, should show me 26. Let's hope. If I say like A, B should be 27. Okay, so you see like, uh, 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 well, uh, A, B is 20, 28 because A, A, A should be 27. Okay, so yes, yeah, so everything's correct. So 27 and if I say B, A, okay, I should return them the correct order for me. So C53, B A C D, whatever it should give me a correct ID. So I wish now you understand how this one works. Maybe you need to do some improvement in the code, such as like what well, the max could hold here because this one may you may reach a limit. And any maybe this citron could have a number or so that citron could have a character. I wish until now everything's clear for you. Thank you for watching and see you next. Let me talk in this video about our first data structure in this tutorial, which is a array. Array is a simple data structure to represent your element as a list of the elements. But first, before we discuss the complexities and everything, let me learn why we need to use array. So assume you have 
10 elements you have one uh, let me just use the front pin you have one you have six seven eight three this is five and uh, this one this one this one and uh, this this okay i think this is 10 elements one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i have 10 elements i want to represent them i want to save them to interact with these data so it will be very hard to save these elements in variables that means every element should be represented as a variable so you would do it if you want to use a variable you say yeah i could do it a variable i would say uh, variable one equal one you represent this one in one variable two equal six you represent this six as a variable variable three will be equal seven here and so on until you the last element which is two you say variable ten equal two so in this case you need ten different variables to represent these elements which will be very very hard for you to do it and to track these elements is better or the better way is just using array you say no why i'm doing all this just do array so on the array you say okay i have only 10 locations this way and i could do whatever i want to do with these things so you say okay 10 locations and this way so you say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, let you assume you say in this array I will name it my array I will give it a name as number okay this is a name for the array our label you give this one label as a number so you just move the elements what's the element do you have I will move them one by one I will use this color so I would have first one which is this element I have six this one then y by one seven eight three eight nine eight two and two so, so the different here i still have same elements but in this case i'm representing these elements in array in one gigantic one big array have all these elements inside it and i could access to this element easily from uh, from the any way I want to access so to access to any element will not be very hard it's very easy process to access to this element let me assume you want to access to the uh, first element or variable number one or what you need to do is say okay number the name of the label which is this label for zero why zero because the index here will be zero index one index two three four five six seven eight nine so to access uh, to number nine in the array you access to it by the index you say i want number nine in this case you say the number the name of the array for the index of six if you say this it will give you number nine okay because the access to it using the index if you want for example get uh, this is three you access to it by the index which is four so you say i want number which is the label i have it for four it will return to you what it will return to you number three because the three is saved here better than so better than having 10 variables it's very easy you could have only one variable name it array and it will hold all these 10 uh, all these 10 elements which is which is which is like really 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 nice thing to to have which is uh, the array just need to focus on in the array you have two things you have the index of the location and you have the value and this is how you just save and define and do everything you want with array so what's the big O for array when we talk about big O that means we will have four definition to talk about in array so now I no longer need that part let me just remove it 
this is things like I'm done with them. I I understand now why I need why I need allies. So no need this part for anymore, and I don't think you need this element also anymore. So in big O, we need to have uh, four different definitions. We need to see how array will work when we want to search. How array will work when we want to do access to elements. How array will work when we want to insert element. And how array will work when we want to delete element. When we want to delete element, how array will work. What's the big O for, ev for every single one of these? What's the big O here? What's the big O here? What's the big O here? And what's big O here? Let's use the red pen and calculate big O for one by one. First one for access or for search. When you want search for element in the array, let me assume we are searching for number uh, number uh, nine, maybe. So in this case, we go here. Is this nine? Is this nine? No. Is this nine? No. Is this nine? No. 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 So I find nine here. Okay. So I, I find it after n try. Okay. So what? Maybe maybe nine will be in the last element in the array. So or maybe it will be first element in the array, or maybe in the middle, like what we find it. So the worst case scenario to find nine is in the last location in the array. This case means it take we take n time because the size of the array here is n. So we will take n time to find any element. So big O will be O of n. We need n time to find any element in the array. So we done with search. Let's go next. Access. You want to access two element in the array. How we access to any element? We said Every element in the array has an index. The index starts from zero and go on. So if you want to access to number nine, for example, very easy. You say just, okay, give me number, because the label is number here. We have a number, okay? So we access to it through using the, the name of the array for the index of nine. What's the index of nine? If you see nine, index for it is six. Give me four, six will give me nine. If you want to access for the element three, for example, so you give it index four. You say, okay, give me number for index four. In this case, we'll return to you three. In that case, we'll return to you nine. So, what do you think the big O? Big O is one, you just easily, like, you just one shot. You don't need to search. So, it's so fast. Yeah, I know. Access to the element in array is so fast. You could do it in O of one time to access to any element in the array which is this is so nice things about arrays this is when you want to access you want something to be accessed faster so the array will be your best shot what if you want to do insert element in the array so this is other concept i want to discuss how we add element there is different way to add elements in the array let me assume let me assume i don't have last element two i want to add now number two uh, to the array, so I want to insert number two. So the process is very easy. I search for empty space. I find here empty space. I add it here, and that is. So I will say add it in the end. I add two, and bump, I'm done. But this is not end of, of the story. What if someone want to add element instead nine? It's, uh, someone want to add two, the two that that location is empty. But someone want to add it in this index. You want to add number two in index number six. In this case, I want to shift the element. Yes, I add two here, but nine will go here. Eight will go here. Two, the second two will go here. So uh, the location will be look like this way. Now let me delete things. Nine, eight, two. So in this way. So it will be two, nine, eight, two. Is that right? Yeah, that's how it will be because I'm adding a new element here and I'm shifting the rest. So this is the problem with insert because insert, I may not always insert element last location. The worst case, I inserted in the middle. So this will take O of N because I need time to shift the element. I need N time to shift the element and fix time to add the element. So adding, we now add an element and look in memory will be take fix. But I need to shift other elements, so I take O 
of n to do this simple nine process or simple nice process well, I said, oh, well not nine so I just will be nine eight two two let me return back to how it was before so it will be nine eight two two okay so let's go to the last concept that we have in here which is a delete element so to delete element in the array again you have two way to delete element maybe you delete the last element so let's assume I'm deleting just two and bump I just delete it just remove it from the array and I will set and will, this one will take off one time but what the worst case scenario I don't have to just delete the last element I may need to delete element in the middle and let's assume I want to delete this element nine someone want to I have nine I want to delete it to delete nine I need to shift eight here sorry I just undo undo so to delete nine this one I, if I want to delete it first of all what I will do I need to shift elements around so that's me eight should go here two should go here go here and the second two should go here and this allocation will be empty because I need to shift beside so I need end time to shift elements so that's mean this will take O of n to do this. That's right, delete will take constant time, but the shift will take n time to happen, which this is why this process is expensive. So we learn now all these things. The delete, the complexity, you should like always put this your this table in your mind. I never forget it about the array. Whenever you want to use array, see why you want to use array. Is you want to access to element faster? Yeah array is your best shot otherwise it may be or it may not and what before I go I want to tell you what was the bad thing about that array. we say all the complexity but what's the bad thing about the array we say it's better and defined than elements the bad thing about array is you define a fixed size okay what I mean by that so let you assume I define an array of 10 but I have only five elements use it I have five more locations empty no one use them with this one oh, 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 oh. so I have only five location use it and I have five empty no one use them I just waste memory location I'm not using them and I'm not allowing anyone else to using them because when I define array for fixed size of 10 10 location that's mean no one else could use these 10 location I'm only the guy who could use these tens. I already used only five and I waste five location so the problem with array if someone tell you what the problem with array say it's the problem is it's fixed size I may define 10 location but I use only five I'm wasting memory location we will see link list how could solve this problem so are we done thank you for watching and see you next Hey everybody, let me talk in this video how we do implement for one dimension array in Java. So if you know it, just skip this video. If you don't know it, let's go through it and just remember some fundamental in one dimension array. So to create one dimension array, I will just start creating my new project. I will name it Java project and I give it name uh, DSAEN or that's mean or do S N U D me would be better. Okay, then I would uh, do next to create the project. So this is my project that will be on, on GitHub. So it would have all the source code. So let's start to create our first package. So our first package, I will create package. I will name it com dot uh, structure. So ds. So this will have all the problems for that structure. I will create a great I will start getting my first class. I will name it uh, one D dimension array. Okay, and make sure to create this method. So I will create static public static method. Yes, here is it. So how to create array in Java? Basically, you you write your data type, which data type you want your array to have. For example, I want to have array of integer. I would say hey, integer. Then I open a bracket, close it. So then I give a name for my array. Let me suppose I give it name numbers. So this is my name of array. I would say a oh, cool, a new, 
then same data type what i have here an integer i will repeat same thing i will say integer then i give the size for array we discussed before we said array have specific size so let me give it size five now that's mean here if, you, if i just try to use the draw tool okay okay to to show you what i define it okay uh, so command alt hopefully command alt wait a minute draw tool so i use command z so if i uh, to just to explain this line just i now create array and this array doesn't have anything but it have five locations so one two three four five and this line i just defined my array so let me give data for this array let me start giving data so let, i want to give data in first location i will say okay number for zero have 20 if you see i give the index for the numbers not number so i give it a 20 that's mean i just went here and i added 20 here 20 do you see if i continue i say okay numbers for one i would add equal five so that's mean hey um went here and i added five here so always numbers not number then i would say okay numbers for two or call 10 then number you continue for two then you continue for other ones so number for three you would say equal six so hopefully numbers not number i don't know why always i i miss the numbers then you say okay numbers for four equal 11 and that is if you see now in the location three i added 10 so make sure you add 10 then location four i added six and in location five i added 11. if you see the indexing like here four refer to this one three refer to this one two refer to this one one refer to this one zero refer to this one now if i ask you to print print these data let me just clean the screen you say okay to print this data i will do for loop for you define integer i equal zero then you say i less than numbers dot length the length mean number of elements that that already in the numbers array numbers dot length in this way that's mean number of element then i plus plus then if you want to print it you say s y s o then you will give it give it this way hopefully no space i don't know why he did not complete it you say okay print numbers for i if you see this is just indexing just indexing to go through all the element of the array now just save it and print it you would see all the number of array if you see what we saved in the first location what we saved in second third four five so whatever your array data type just write the data type for example integer character float string whatever the data that you want to save it describe it here open a bracket close it give a name for your array a new from same data type then give it a size then to access to any index just give the index name and give the data inside it and to read it in the same way just for loop to the end then you print it one by other now this is basic type of uh, array so there is many many type of of array that you could work with it for example array of objects so let me suppose i have student so i will create a new class i will name this class student so student so this student have constructor only if you see just i highlight constructor to get constructor for student so what do you think i would have for student for sure i would have the name sitting name and i also have an integer that you suppose for age of the student so these two properties have to be initialized in the constructor you send the name and you send the age for the student now let me just initialize them i say this dot name or call name and this dot age equal age that's mean hey if you get any object in the constructor initialize these two variables now let me create array of uh students that number of students i have in the class so i would say here array of objects okay 
we say same thing first we describe the data type the data type should be what data type student is that right student in this way this is my data type a class so i will say array of i will say students hopefully i write it correct so i have array of students then you say oh cool a new instance of that array so let me suppose i have four students not too many because i don't want to give for everything so now let me say in the index for zero for this array what i will add i will add a new instance of this object so what i have student for because it is every location in this array is class so i say new student and you give it the data type the data input did you see in the input what you give we give two things name and age let me suppose i would give hussein and the age 27 and same thing for remand so you continue the same process for other uh, things so you say okay what's the problem here on this line i don't know what i see why i see problem here yeah i just write them outside the the main function so make sure add them here inside the main function so array of student if you see well the problem is i have to create not in you from this one from the, this object have to be this object do you see here you go you continue for the next third four so the second student that you suppose would be jenna and the age two year and uh, third student should be Naya, and i would suppose one year and the fourth student for while and the age zero year this is my fourth student and every student has specific information if you want if i want to put all this information how i put them same way i say for integer i equal zero then i less than and go that project all the object you say i less than student in this way dot length in this way then i plus a plus then for everyone you say yes S Y S O print for me the name and age you say okay name this way plus uh, students this is my array for the specific index i dot name and same thing plus you say age for same thing i just just let me just make sure i'm, I'm in the right direction just age plus same thing i'm still talking about this student dot uh, age and here you go now if i try to print them i have to have a list of student yes yeah, there's a problem you say that array you say here is you have a problem so where's the problem here here is student for i i equal zero so you say what he say here say null object because zero is yes, zero one zero one two three you have to write the index correctly now i have null because null is stopped so i have to give an index so if you see hussein aged jenna his age leia his age and everything but here is not i don't say this one is is a good way to explain your data it's better because this is array of objects so we could do for each so i say for each okay in this way like for each element and student take them so i would say this one is better okay for each students and students so every student i take them one by one so understand array of item i could access student dot name or student dot age just to make your code more clear and more reasonable yeah there you go now i have other data i will understand how to do array of object if you doesn't get it so yeah for the second one i know it's a little bit complex but think about it in this way in this way think about it you say okay i have array of object and every array have the array have four element and every single element is part from this class it's called it's complete class from this one okay so now when you want to initialize everyone every index you have to do for example i did this line for this one for this one i did this line for this one i did this line and for this one i did this line so i need to initialize every index in a specific way yes this is basically how to work with on damage array here we're done and thank you for watching
I'm Hussein Arubay, I'm a senior engineer in one of the big tech companies and in this video I'm going to teach you another interesting problem you most likely going to see when you do interview for a software engineer role with one of the big tech companies. This type of problem called slicing a problem. So before we started, if you have not subscribed already, please do so. So let's get started. So this in this type of problem, that's we call it slicing a problem. The interviewer, what the interviewer looking for, he's looking for your ability to use a pointers to go through the data or use multiple pointers to pick specific data or, or do some com comparing things or so so uh, in this video I will, I will have two problems first problem called water container where you have a containers of waters and you got to find the max container like for example you have here this is so what this this different type of this different columns so my idea here which two columns you're going to pick where you have where you could hold most amount of water so for example will you pick this one and this one Will you pick which one? Which two you pick? We will have most amount of water. Will you pick this one on this one? Will you going to pick these two? So which two you going to pick to hold out to to have most amount of water? And the second question is this a question where I I you have a ones and you have arrays with ones and zeros, and your goal is uh, which zeros you going to flip? You, then you could have a longest sequence of ones. So for example, if I flip this, this zero, if I flip this zero to one, okay? If I flip it to one, what the longest sequence of ones I will have? I will have three. If I flip this zero to one, what the longest sequence of ones will have? I will have uh, these four, okay? If I flip this zero to one, what the longest sequence of ones I will have? I will have three. So the longest sequence I could have by flipping one zero here will be four. We'll go through this step by step uh, in the, I mean, when we solve the problem. So we're going to solve these two problems and we will understand how we use these two type pointers solutions. So it gets started with the water container problem. So in the water container problem, uh, you will have, uh, in your question, you will be, you'll be given array. And this is array, like you see, it has elements, like have a one, uh, one, eight, uh, six two five four eight three seven you see one hair is the same one this is one hair eight hair is this one eight and going forward like six this is six this is two this is five this is four and this is eight and this is a three and this is seven so this is your input and your goal is just to find which two columns you're going to pick so you will have most amount of water so I mean, when you reach this problem you're always looking for the biggest size so your two pointers will be the first one in the f in the beginning and the second one in the end and you try to see how much water you could have by having these two columns only so how much you have well the width will be multiplied by the height but i have two height one of them seven one of them one which one i'm going to pick well <laughs> think about think you have only these two so you have one one and seven and you want to just want to put water so the water will go here and the max you could reach is you fill only this part is that right you, you cannot have more than more than this this is the max you can have okay so you will be the max height you could have in this case is just uh, uh only one so your height will be one the width is exactly whatever width here you have like one two three four five six seven eight nine i think so nine multiplied by one this is the max container then you pick these two like with this one eight this one seven so you'll have a container like look like this but then you just okay you fill it with water i think you max you can get i mean this is the eight should be more than seven and this is the max container or so so but how you move your pointer so the the i mean Okay, I have two pointers, one of them here and one of them here, and I just collect or I, I calculate my first uh, uh, container. Well, how, how I could determine which are the next? Well, most likely if you want to find the next max, you have two values, one and seven. Which one are you going to move? Will you move seven? No, because you're most likely going to move the least value. So here how you move them. Like whenever you find a container, then the next the next container will depend on the last value. So you have one and seven. 
you're going to move this pointer here, okay? Because this is less than this one. Then you calculate how much that water you could have here. Then now you have two, one of them height of seven, eight, one of them seven. Which one are you going to move? You're going to move this one. Then you have eight and three. Which one are you going to move? This one. Now you have eight and eight. It's up to you to move which one because both of them same. I will move this one, okay? Then I have uh, these two on. I mean, just just move them. The one who you, you always, the, the idea here, you have two pointers in the beginning and in the end. And, the, and you, every time you calculate the area, then what you do, you just like move the lowest one pointer to the next or this one to the less. Okay, this one, other, this one will go plus plus, this one will go minus minus. So I guess start by solving this problem. As I said, my input is just array as this is the same array you have it like this is it tell you like you need to write this method and this method will will get array as input in this case this is my array is exactly same as this array I have it here is as input and I'm required to return the longer or the largest area so let's see they get it as a return and they just print it for now zero because I'm just having nothing yet so my goal is my goal is I what I, I should return I would just return max uh, area so for now max area is zero it's not good to use zero because they may pass minus values and that will cause some problems so always whenever you use max use this part integer dot min min value min value is, is smallest minim, minimum values and by the end i'm going to return this one that's my goal i'm going to return uh, this max value okay but for now if i just run it <laughs> nothing going to happen because I, oh okay i will just return minus value the biggest minus value because i don't have any other values as i said i would have two pointers here i have one pointer from the begin beginning so i will call it begin and i will give it zero because we'll have a first index in the array it will get this index and then my other pointer will be in the end which will be will be integer end will be uh, array uh, dot length minus one and you know why that because as i said in that question i will have two pointers one of them the first element one of them the last element so the first element index will be zero the last element will be length minus one okay now i have begin and end um, i should continue while the begin uh, beginning less than end and what that means so while begin less than end uh, I should continue. So this loop will continue looking for the maximum uh, maximum uh, amount or maximum area. So how I calculate the area and why is begin less than end? So I mean, if you just think about it, you have just two pointers. These two pointers just continue moving unless they are they did not hit each other or they did not pass each other. Okay. I mean, just look at it. I mean, this one this one can move here. This one can move here. This one can move here. This one can move here then they should not pass each other okay you should have to stop point otherwise you go to the infinite uh, case so okay mm, this is my case i'm while well the beginning less than end for every single time i need to calculate the area so the area will be multiplied by width by height so the width will not be hard to to measure so because integer width will be uh, the end minus begin and this is like the width i mean I mean the width as, as I say like if I just go back what's the width of this one well the in this one the index of this one minus the index of this one so if I say 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so it'll be 8 minus 0 8 that's the width the height should be the minimum value between this and this one okay you just pick a minimum value between these two okay so will be will be the integer height will be integer or math, I should use math. I use math uh, dot min minimum value between a and b. Which a? a will be whatever in the array. You see array for the beginning and the array to the end. Okay? And array to the end. Okay, these two values. So I just get the, mini, uh, the height. Now I have the area. Well, as I said, area will be multiplied by width by height. So I say width multiplied by height. This is my area. Well, I know 
I have a new area and I wish to compare it with this max area. If it's greater than that one, I will use it. I could do this, like max area equal math dot max between whatever max area I have with the current area. What that do is just say, okay, compare whatever existing area I have, which is like this big minus with the new area, which one is bigger, which I assign it to this. Now I'm done. I calculate the area. So, okay, yeah, I have this. I have this one and this one, I have the area. Now I need to move the pointer. Which one should move, this one or this one? As I said, the one with minimum value. So what I will do, I will say this. Okay, if the array for the, sorry, array for the beginning less than array for the end, if the array for the for the beginning less than the array to the end so the beginning will pointer will move otherwise the end pointer will move so end will be minus minus it will not be plus plus because either this side or this side and this should continue until we finish the the try it and see which what value i will get so 49 that's right so the largest container I could have is 49 because the largest container I could have is this one, which is will be seven multiplied by this one, two, three, uh, seven by seven, 49, I guess, I guess so. So seven the width, seven the height, it will be 49. So you see it, you see these two pointers, how they just, how I just use two pointers, one in the beginning, one in the beginning, one in the end, and I just move both of them. And I use these values to to measure how I move them. Well, let's go to the second question. So, the second question here, what I want to do is just okay. Yeah, I have zeros and ones, and my goal is uh, what's like which zero I should flip to have a longest sitting, uh, longest one. So, if I just flip this one to one, I should return four. The longest is four. Okay. So there is two ways of reaching this problem. Well, either you say, okay, I will use two pointers. I'm gonna pointer call it before zero and after zero. So we'll have here, uh, after what's the before zero, zero, what's the after a two? This one, another zero. What's the before zero is two? What's after it is one. Like how many zeros here? I have one zero. How many ones I have? One, two. How many zeros? Zero. How many ones I have? One. How many zeros I have? zero i just I, I put the zeros as they are and i add the ones so i have c two ones i put them as a two the zeros will, will go down as they are i have another zero zero and i have a one as one so for if at every point i calculate like okay at this point what if i flip this zero what will be the max will be three if i flip this zero what will be the max will be this one is that right will be again uh four I flip this zero, what will be the max? Will be uh, three. So you either could use two pointers, one of them could hold the previous value or before, and one of them hold after, or you can use, you can just convert the problem. So instead of using this array, you say, okay, let me just take the problem and convert it to a different shape. I, I just first, whenever I find zero, I put it as it is. Whenever I find continuous ones, I add them. So I have one, one, I had two. I have zero, will go as it is. I have ones, will be one as it is, zero, zero as it is, one, one as it is. And I have this array, okay? And Giving that, I now, I now I will just look for zeros whenever I have a zeros, and I just add it with the value before and after. So this zero will be added with this one and this one. This zero will be added with this one and this one, and this zero will added with this one, and there is nothing before. So it's just, it's just up to you. Either you just save them in the temporary, or just convert the problem from this to this, or you just use direct two pointers. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use a direct two pointers. So let's see how I can solve this problem. So you see this is zeros and ones, I slice the problem two, and I'm sending them to array called longest one. And this one will should return the longest ones. So okay, let's start think. So I have should have an integer uh, longest one. So it should be long one. As I said, since is the max I should I should use integer dot min values okay 
don't use max value because you'll have an issue. And I should rotate on this one. For now, as I said, if I just find it, it will be just the biggest integer number, uh, minus integer number. As I said, I will have two pointer. One of them called it before zero. For now, to have a zero value. And one of them call it after zero. Okay. It will have a zero value also. And uh, I think that is. So there. then I just do a for loop for integer i equal zero i less than the array dot length then i plus plus then i go through the array element by element so what i would do well if it is if the array for the i equal equal one the value is ones as i said when i get ones i will just add them so it will be after zero plus plus because i'm just just adding these these ones together one one two three something like that else what i will do is okay now i'm getting zeros what i will do well first thing i need to uh, find a, a new long so i say define integer len will be what will be will be before zero plus after zeros plus one what does that mean well, we said, if you remember, when we when we use the problem, we said, I will just add the whatever ones before the zeros and whatever ones after the zeros plus this one. This one, when you flip it, will be one, so plus one, okay? So this one plus one plus this one. Again, I will just compare with the longest ones. So it will be longest ones will be equal math dot max between what? Between longest one with the length, okay? Okay, you say you say you could call it longest len, so it'll be just better or will what I will define. And you just compare it and you just okay now on the, the larger one, the bigger one than this one. Now I will just say okay, I now at this point I have what before me, what after me. Now what will happen will be before val zeros will be have the values of the after zeros, and the after zeros will start look for start point again so i could just make this one easy by move this one here and i don't need this definition here okay and what that mean mean like okay whenever you reach a zero see how many ones before it and how many ones after it and uh, plus one and compared to the existing length now i'm going to another zero so the before for this one will be uh, the after for this one will be before for the previous one and the new after will be zero. I mean, you just think about it. You just, you just scanning array. Is that right? You just going here, from this side to this side. So if this one before for this zero will be two. For this zero, they will be after, because this. So this one before will be after, and this one should be the, the new before. You see, there is a case now. I mean, I guess now if I run it, it will work just fine for. But there is a case if the last digit is one, I will not have a correct length. Okay. Well, if, uh, think about it this way: if I have these, if I just have another zero here, well, this one uh, zero, and uh, here. So, so the longest will be four. Is that right? But let's see what we will get. Will we get four? Hopefully, we'll get four. We did not get four. We get two. The reason here we get two because well we only do this check when we hit zero uh, we don't do this check when we hit if the last element is one so the last the last uh, the last process will be uh, will be just get missed so you either you just say okay I will just do this here again and I will solve the problem because whatever will be the last process once I'm going to hold it or you could just say here I mean it's just there's a different way you say here long. oh yeah if this element is the last element if I equal array dot length minus one that's mean yeah I'm done this is the last element I would just do the compare here it's just up to you I mean any way you think it is easiest for you just just I mean <laughs> it did not <laughs> it did not work here I guess because 
when z because you still lose i i guess you still lose uh the what you i, I think hell yeah, that will not work because we are i'm i think we are losing something here let me just see uh yeah it, it, it will not work here i think so so you just you should you should just put it you should just put it here okay in the end okay or you see these two lines can be just can be easiest to combine it to be one line like this nice line and it should just work just fine no i think it's work there i just i just i think i i i i, I delete something here okay well what i mean i mean what the longest here is a three that's true well, what if this one is one what the longest here the longest here is four what if i just go to other solution the one like this one only longs and i do this compare here it should work because i know it works somehow if the uh, i equal array dot length minus one i mean this solution will, will should work should work just fine should return four as well okay yeah yeah should work but as I said, I would rather to use the shortest answer, which is this. And you know why. So now, just try to use a different length and you will see the answers. You want to go through debugging? Sure, try to do debug step by step and see how this one works. I already passed the 20 minutes, so I don't want the videos be so long. So you could just you could just do the debug by your own for this one or this one and see how you could measure these values by now we done and uh, thank you for watching and see you next Come. let me talk in this video about another interesting problem that have been seen in amazon job interview the question look like this giving a array with ones and zeros find the longest sequence of ones that you could get if you flip one zero what that mean? That mean if you get this array, find longest sequence of ones by flipping one zero. For example, if I flip this zero to one, this sequence will be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. If I flip this zero to one, the sequence will be one, one, four. Is that right? If I flip this 0 to 1, the longest sequence here will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So, the longest sequence I could have it here is what? Is 5. For this one, if I flip this one to 0, 0 to 1, so the longest sequence I will have it from here to here, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I flip this one to 1, the longest sequence I will have it from here to here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the longest sequence of ones by flipping one zero is seven. So this is the question. But but now let me think how to solve this problem with the best space and time complexity. Now the best or the first thing James jump to my mind to solve this is just define for loop and this for loop goes through the array element by element and whenever it finds a zero it will scan in the left side and right side and find how many ones are around it for example this zero there's two ones here three ones here four ones here and this zero have four ones here two ones here for two so if, if you can see for a, first we need n time to go through all the elements and getting only the zeros then for every element or for every zero we need to scan n time in the right side and n time in the left side to find how many elements are on. so there is for loop and there is two for loop inside that for loop okay but these four loop this one n and this one n and this one n 
of this n plus n because you're going here inside and so n plus n so the max here would be n multiplied by n plus n the complexity so uh, the complexity is n squared plus n squared does mean n squared so this solution is naive solution you we could solve the problem in n squared time but this may not be the best solution whenever you get when you go in, in the interview and you have a question that question require or your solution come up with n square you need to think about the solution because they don't want you to solve problem in n square most likely n n log n that's the max you could go in the solving solving any problem in job interview now let me think about another solution we could solve the problem less than n square uh, time or space time complexity if you don't know what uh, n square and what time what time complexity is i would advise you to take my course i will add a coupon for you uh, in the video description it's 95 percent so you could learn more about these fundamentals what complexity is and all these details now let me think about another way of solving this problem what if i try to change the problem for example I've summed the ones so for example I have how many ones here I have two I keep the zero as it is sum the ones here how many ones I have four then I put the zero as it is how many ones I have here two so I change the array from this one to be this so two ones zero four ones zero two same thing for the array or for the above I will change these to two one that's mean two this one to zero stay as it is how many ones there I have two zero stay as it is one zero these two ones will be two and that is now for both these examples if you want to find longest sequence usually you move every every three steps so this for these threes you say okay how many I have here I would have six plus zero seven and uh, for example you now you go here how many I have six plus zero seven okay and same thing here if I just drive three by three so how many I have here four or four four and zero five and for this one to this one how many I have three and zero four and how many have this one here three and zero four so the max is five so i did just change the problem if you look there's not very 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 complex things i just like try to change how the problem look like and instead using zero and ones i start to represent the ones by numbers and that is now it's just i would take n time to convert this problem to this problem and here I will take not n less than n n divided by 2 to get to solve this one so that will be this one plus this one that's mean I will have n plus n divided by 2 to solve this so the max here is n so I move it the complexity from n square to n and this solution and with the so with the n only it's much better because it's faster now let me see how we could just represent what i just said here in code so i open clips and i just create a new problem or new package and i will name it com dot problem problem number five okay and in this one I will define a class I name it longest common subsequence for ones uh oh not this one sorry I name the class longest common subsequence for ones okay and make sure I create that crazy method that should be appear in every where so now let me solve this problem step by step I will just make this screen bigger so you could see what I'm doing so how we do it just first of all let's assume I have an array 
integer array uh, and that array will have uh, elements which is I would assume 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 okay this is my array this is my input okay let's assume this one the input and now I want to find the longest common subsequence for ones by flipping one zeros first of all I say the first first I need to what convert the problem so from ones and zeros to this one will be represented by two this one represents stay as it is two zero one whatever zero one two so you could use same array to solve this problem or you could use different uh, different de different uh, another array for example another array I would name it array list okay I would use another array just to make the pro solution clear for you it's better for you to use same array for the time for space complexity I will name it list list just list will be equal a new uh, array list okay uh, should not be string should be integer because the numbers here all of them are integer so I assume here integer, here is also uh -oh, integer. Okay, so here you go. This is my array. So now I need to go through the array element, element by element. So I say integer i equals zero, i less than array dot length, then i plus plus. Okay, and now I should have loops going in every elements in the array I need to sum the number of ones so I say sequence for the ones total equal zero and what I do here I say okay if array for i equal equal one that means this is one I need just is this is sequence of ones and it just increase this sequence by one I say sequence plus plus that's mean I'm in the sequence otherwise if I get zero I all what I do I say okay if it's zero I want you first of all to check how many ones I have if I have a sequence of ones greater than uh, zero that's mean I just need to add it to the list list dot add the sequence for the ones and beside that what I add to the list more I add the zero that I just got it for array for i and also make sure the sequence of ones I just set it to zero so for the next sequence okay so it's very simple you just go th loops through element by element in the array so for example when you get a zero one it will increase this one and okay, the other ones you have two now then you get a zero it will come here first we'll add two in the array then it will add the zero so by here we'll have array have two element two zero then two zero then one zero two but you see there is a last element if, if in the end there is a ones and there is no zeros we, we may have some elements missing I uh, just make sure this one not be inside this loop this one should be inside the if, outside of the statement and if I just get to the end and I have ones no more zeros I, so I need to make sure here I say if the total equal than zero and the i equal equal array length minus one so that's mean if I'm in the end of the array and the total is greater than one that's mean no more zeros no I still have ones did not recorded yet I just add them so now here I should be all set so if I just try to print the array for you to show you uh, how the list look like you may see it you may like it you may not so I have a new array so two zero two zero one two see if I just flip this one to one so I should have four ones so so now if I just run it so I see two so this is the two zero it's zero four ones it represent by four then a zero it's zero then two ones two so now I just have the problem this way now it's very easy for me to find 
the max sequence all what i do i just do a for loop through this list and this loop is just go through three elements three elements per time so first it's some dc threes then it jump here some dc threes then it jump here some dc threes because you don't want to sum things is if i sum this one and this one and this one so this is a three this one already considered you could you could sum this one and this one and this one but I don't see it valid because you have zeros on two sides. I would rather do, do plus two, but you could go through all the elements, element by element, by the way. So I would define again for loop. And my for loop will be integer i equals zero i less than the list dot size. Then semicolon i plus plus. As I told you, you could say I equal I plus two. That's what I prefer because you could you say, okay, this is three. Then you say this is three. Then you say this is three and continue. But I, what I think, I think if you take these threes, that will be enough to cover this one. You no longer need to consider zero again with these two zeros. Or do you know what? No, you cannot take, you cannot do I plus one because if you say this one, you take only one zero here. You cannot take this case because you have two zeros here. If you need to flip two zeros. So you need to, what you need to do, you need to do i, i plus two, and that is, so this is the correct one. You cannot, yes, you cannot say i plus one. Now, what I do is I say integer len will be equal for whatever on the list dot get for i. That's good. Now I need to sum it with i, then i plus 1, i plus 2, okay? That's good. I say if the i plus 1 is still less than the list dot size, so I, name, I, I don't want to go to the location outside of the lane of my list, so I say lane plus will be equal list dot get for i plus one i just always make sure when i add someone i just make sure to add it as a i plus one okay and then a call you say lane then a plus be equal this and same thing this is just spacing things I say if i plus 2 less than the size, so again also add i plus 2. Now I have all of them. I say if lane greater than the max, so I did not define the max now here, I say max equal lane. Okay? So I would assume they have something here, name it max equal 0. We could name it max sequence. Okay, and this one should be here and here. And bam, here I could, after this loop, you could just easily print the sequence. Max sequence will be plus whatever the sequence. But here if I just try to sum these three. So I have two plus zero plus four. This will be six. So zero here should sh zero hair should be considered as a one because you flip it so here instead i plus one this one you could say if there is a element here you say and this one mm, equal equal zero then you add one else you add whatever the element is here okay okay that's what i think you could always add one because we know it is always even odd. You just add plus i equal i plus one. That's what I would say enough because you should always have zero, two, like number zero, number zero. Always they should be flipped. So if the first element number, that's what we assume because you jump always one. So the second one should be a zero. So I just click it. So max sequence is seven. That's right. If I just try to change it. So let me assume I have here as a one. 
sorry I have a zero here and I just run it so max sequence here if I just get from here the first flip I have four if I just take only these I have th three if I take these one this one I should be two three and I take this should be the longest one four five so see the sequence here is five so yeah we did it so think about this it's just a way the biggest problem was how to convert the pro uh, the how how we present the problem in different way so if you see this for loop to get run will take n time so because loop n and uh, this one is plus one so that's mean divided by two if it n n by n divided by two so that's mean we have n plus n divided by two so the max time will be spended here and the complexity here is just n uh, yeah we're done and one more last if i just consider this one as a zero because i always so you have a four because the longest sequence will be this one or this one these both are four so here we done thank you for watching and see you next time let me talk in this video about two dimension array two dimension array mean you have your data represent by rows and columns okay that's mean if I told you two dimension array four by four that's mean you have four rows and four columns but how we represent these two dimension array four rows and four columns basically you say okay I have a box which have four rows one this is row number one row number two row number three and row number four okay and have four columns which is that's mean this way column number one column number two column number three and column number four so four rows four columns so this row if I just change the pin to make it nicer so this will be row number zero this row number one this row number two this row number three okay because we start from zero and same thing for column this column column number one or number zero this column number one this column number two and this column number uh, three every cell will have a row and column so looking by this one it have a row number zero column number zero okay we still in row number zero but column number one row number zero column number two row number zero column number three same thing go next we have row number one column number zero one 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 two and one three same thing for the third, third row row number three column number zero row number three column number one uh, three two and three three uh, and uh, sorry this is this is row number two sorry so t row number two column number zero row number two column number one row number two column number two row number two column number three here i have row number three column number zero row number three column number one row number three column number two row number three column number three so this is how we access any element if I told you hey could you bring me the uh, this element in the array you say it's very easy what's the name of the array it's supposed to name it array D you say okay I want array D for row number one column number two it will return that element for you very very basic simple thing to do it but what else you could learn from this uh, two dimension array uh, you could learn from it how the data would be represented if you look through this diagonal you see all the elements are equal you have first 0 0 1 1 2 2 
three three. If I told you bring me the diagonal, you would, you say okay. If row equal colon it will return for you all these elements. If you want to bring any element under the diagonal, this y this side. So what we get, you will notice here all the rows less than the column. So for example, this one row number one, column number zero, all the time a row higher. Here row number two, column number zero, two one. Two, three. So always the row greater than column. We say row greater than column. Same thing for the up diagonal. Up diagonal always the column is higher. So column higher than row. Column higher than row. So you say I need the column higher than row. This is very very important when you want to solve dynamic problem question to using array. It's very very nice way to solve these problems. I will tell you very basic. Or very good question that I got in my one of my job interviews using dynamic programming using dynamic programming to solve a problem. We'll talk about dynamic programming later on, but let me see now how it could be helpful, especially for this uh, four by four two dimensional array. How we could use this four by four to solve dynamic problem dynamic dynamic programming question uh, that I got it in my job interview. So the question was as this, he told me like you have a word as an input loop and you have a dictionary of words, one of them pool, one of them lupo, one of them book and so on so forth. He told me like if you give, if I give you input loop, you should return to me any word have same characters like pool for example. Have uh, also have two O one L one P, Lupo also have two O one L one P book note. So I should in this case I should say okay, yeah I could I would return this one as a correct this one correct and the other one it's not correct if you give me loop as input. So the dynamic program uh, dynamic programming I say okay it's very easy to solve this using dynamic programming I would say. I would get words one by one, which is in this case, I have loop L O O P as input. This is my input. And this is a dictionary. And I compare word by word. So, for example, if I just come to pool, so what I should find in this row, do I have L? No, 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 yes. Do I have O? No, yes. I should in my in this one case I should concentrate. I take only O. I don't take the second O. I take zero zero. Do I have O? No. This is O. Yes, but already use it. I don't use it. This is another O. Yes. And this is no. Do I have P? No. Yes. No. 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 So the basic solution was yes. I this word is similar to this word because I could have one one in every row. So that means they match. Yeah, so yeah, pool equal to uh, loop. They have same word, so we are good to go here. So what's other? Let me take book and see why book don't fit. So you will understand why in this case uh, book will not be a good or not fit for the solution. I, I would ask you to implement this one code if you could. So it's good to learn. So if I just get a book as input, why book will not fit? Book B O O K. So is is L here? No, 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 no. So I fail from the beginning. There is a failure. We don't need to search more because we said I should have one, one at every column. This is my constraint. My solution was I should have one, ones at every row to be a cool. It's very nice, and then as it was uh, uh, interviewing the company, they really care about algorithms and and building things. I just what I have to do just I put constraint. I say okay, I should have only one, and the number that I use it or the character I don't use it. I don't I, I the character I use it. I don't use it again. Like you see, put, loop for example or. Yeah, I have it here, but I can't use this one as a one. I should I should ignore it because use it, I could use this second one. But P uh, and that is yeah. So the P is not in any row, and uh, so this one is not there. This one is not there, so it don't fit. That is book not a cool pool. Here we done. Thank you for watching, and see you next.
Hey everybody, that you like in this video how we could do implement for two dimension array. So I would just create a new class and I would name this a class uh, two in this way two dimension array. Okay, I make sure to remove the constructor and create only main method. So to def to define two dimension array, you just describe also the data type. You open two bracket because this is two dimension. So if the data type is integer, you say integer. If the data type character, you say character. If string, you say string. So imagine I want to do array three by three in this way. So I would suppose I would do this array. So this way. Okay. This is my array. So this is what I want to do. I have three by three array. Three row, three columns. Okay, that's mean I have three row, three columns. So what's the name of array? Let me support this data. Equal. You initialize it. To initialize, you say new. Then you give it the data type. Also say integer. You give the size. The number of rows. I would say three. Number of column. I also say three. So first one for row. Second one for column. You ended the line. So let's start uh, initialize the data. I want to do. I want to add one here, two here five here okay so in the first line so i would say data for the row number zero cell number zero what i mean by zero zero i mean the, the first one this one so i would say one okay i was then i continue so let me zero one i would add two is that right zero two i would add five this is first row. Let you continue with the more rows. So I will suppose here you go. I would go to the second row. So let me suppose I want to add here five. So let me just start the drawing tool. I would say five, eight, twelve. Okay. So now I'm going to the second row. So the second row should be row number one column number zero is that right yes i would add five then go next row number one column number one i would add eight row number one column number two i would add 12 going to the third row i would add here for example zero 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 is that right three zeros you say okay and uh, you would copy this one and you go down three of them just to make the life easy you say row number two 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 column number zero so you add zero column number one you add zero column number two you add also zero so i just initialize all my array with this data now think about it i want to print all this data okay because i have row and column so i have to have two uh loop i say four integer i equals zero i less down four or i less down four i less than three then i plus plus because i'm starting from uh, first row then you have second loop you say four integer j equals zero j less than three then j why j i'm saying j then i write i then you say j plus plus that's cool now you want to print the array you say okay s y s o then print for me the element in the aj i would not say slash n i would say uh, data for row and column okay print it then i would suppose to add slash t to add specific place then when he done from every row when he before he go to the second row i would do slash n to display it in the same way that you see it in the screen so if i print now you see here you go i have one two five five eight twelve zero 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 same thing do you know what this line did it's just taking every row add uh, this one line and this one line and this one line this one a print line line so this is this is the way how you print all the elements so let me think out about this problem different perspective let me suppose i want you to print only the main diagonal do you know what i mean by that i want you to print only this so how you print them we decide you say we say okay if i equal equal j then print it so i have to i will to print only main diagonal so 180 180 this is basically how i manage two dimension array 
there is many many things you could manage the damage area but this is a basic example if you see this is this is for rows and this loop for column so he every time moving the specific column and this one every loop he move from first row then second row then third row and this is how we would move between our rows yeah this is basic example how to do them to damage array as i told you, you could do array of object you could do array of whatever you would like i just did it of array of integer you could excuse same example for one dimension array for two dimension array of object here we done and thank you for watching let me talk in this video about the superior matrix superior masks problem have been seen with google and with amazon and with uh, microsoft so and been seen with many companies the idea behind this problem, the interviewer want to understand how good you are in two-dimensional problems. So, th the spell problem is this problem. Like you have given two-dimension array, you need to print the elements in separate way. That's we need you need to print one, then two, then three, then four. Then you print eight, twelve, sixteen, then fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, then nine, five, then six, seven, then eleven, then ten. So you see how we move the idea behind spray you move the, any spray move you, you move this way so you just continue move until you reach the final element in the array that's what the spray move, movement mean so how we do that i mean the easiest way is just using four pointers two for row and two for the column so if, if one of them is named it row first this one is referred to the index of the first element in the row for example, we here we have it zero. The second one is row last. In this case, if I have four, that means I have last row is a three. It depends on the indexing. If you want to give the index, if you want your index to start from one, so you would say row one and row four. It depends how you index the elements. Since we are writing code in Java, so the first row is zero and the last row is here in this case is three. And I have another one which is column one, column first, or that means if you refer to the first column, which is in this case zero, and column last in this case, which is three. So we have four pointers. So for example, for the first try, what we print? We print from the first column to the last column, and we go and increase. Then we print what? We go to we, we we in this case this this column down. Then we just print this way. Then we print this way. Then we print this way. I will show you how we do it in the code, so it make this or solving this problem more clear for everyone. So let me just get started and try to write our code. So I would just open my uh, code and I'll name it this one. I think we are on problem 18 now. So I would say a new package. I will name it uh, problem okay, 18. Which is I'm in com, so it should be com dot problem 18. Okay. So on here I have a class. I name it spell spell move. So class spell I think spell matrix okay and I make sure I have my public constructor dimension array I would define integer mm, my array and I will give it initial with the values and this is the values I try to give it I try to give it first row 1, 2, 3, 4, second row 5, 6, 7, 8, third row 9, 10, 11, 12, fourth row 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is my array and I want to define now a method. A method I just call it to, to print in separate way. I, I could just write the code here or I could just define my own method. I could, it's better to define your own method because you may need to turn on value and it may, I will name it to print uh, separate. Okay. And this one will receive integer. All right. I just do it this way. I told you because you may need to change your mind to return a value from the method, so it's easy to change. So now to call this that method, all what I need to do is just I say, okay, I have a new instance of my class, and I want to print separate to my array. Okay. 
I'm sending array head. As I said, I have I have four pointers in this case. First one is first row, so I name it first row. It should refer to zero. Second one is last row. It should refer to the last row in the array, so that's mean array dot length. Okay, and I have a first column. I name it first column. It should refer to the first column, which is zero. And I have last column, which is referred to the last column, which is, will be array for zero dot length. What's different between array for zero and array without for zero? If I say array dot length, return to me number of the rows in two dimension array. Array dot zero dot length. That's mean it will go and check for the row zero how many columns we have. So that's mean. This is how we get number of columns. Now I want to to print. I, I need stop condition. So my stop condition while the first row should be less than the last row, which is normal. Last row. And my first column should be less than the last column. Otherwise, I will continue. OK, this is my stop condition to move. And you now, by the end, since I have first row zero, I need to increase it. So it will be pro plus plus. And I have last row, since it's in the, in the end, will, I will decrease it. And I have a first column. By the end, I should in, uh, increase it because zero should go up. And the last column, it is in up, I should decrease okay a very very nice way so this is how we just just manage okay so it's a very very easy way to manage your loops and make sure you are, you are in the boundary so every time i increase rows decrease column uh, decrease last and increase first decrease last column so how i print i say in the first i need to print this row that's mean i'll print from first column to the last column so i say okay i have a for loop row or name it app I mean name it for integer I equal first what first column yep I less than or equal or less than last column we could just make it in the boundary so we don't have any issues so minus one or you could, it, it, is, it is up to you. I, I would keep it on the last column. So I would say lowest down or equal uh, last column, then I plus plus, okay? Then here I would print, I would say system array for what? I would take same row, which is first row in this case, Uh, for the column, I'm just moving. Okay, for I as a column. That is mean to move up, I will go from the first column to the last column, and I print all the elements of the column keeping the first row as a zero. Yeah, because here I'm in the row number zero, I will change between these columns. Now I'm in the end. When I reach the end, now I need to print this side. This side will be from where to where? Should be from the first row to the last row but first row already printed so it should be first row plus one to the last row so i would say same thing just very easy for integer i equal first row and now see i just moved to the first row since fir the last element in the row already printed it should be first row plus one then i less than the last row and uh, then i plus plus then just like an increase then i would just print them in this case i who will change the one who change will be the i the row and the one then will be stable will be the last column because i'm printing here i'm in the last column so the stable one will be last column so i would just get the last okay column nice tight so last column see so now i have printed all the last column to the end so by here i should print one two three four eight 
12, 16. Now I need to print it from this side. Now I need to go from 16 to 13. That means I need to go from the last column to the first column. But the last column I already printed should be last column minus 1. Is that right? Yep. So I would say for integer i equal last column minus 1 i greater than or equal remember this one should be same thing less than or equal I don't use less than here greater than or equal first column then i minus minus I'm just going in the minus direction okay now who I'm printing and who will be stable think about it just think about it for the second that one should be changed for sure the column okay because I'm changing the columns which row will be stable will not change the last row because the last row will be the same so I will say okay last row okay now I'm just printing from I did print the element as far as I know 16 already printed so I'm not taking 15 14 13 now I just need to print these from 13 to 1 that's mean first but for sure, one or 13 already printed and one already printed. So I should go from the row minus one to the column plus one. Okay, so in this case, I would say, okay, for, and this way for integer i equal the last row uh, minus one then i greater than now i don't say greater than or equal first row then i minus minus why i don't say greater than or equal because i don't want to take the first one okay now i what i need to do is just print it system dot who is going to print the one is going to be stable is the first column and the row will be changed so as a row I will change and as a columns the one will be changed it will be the first column first column okay let me just run it and see if everything is correct otherwise we just debug and see what's going on so I have a three okay the way I just printed in multiple lines because I didn't I I, I didn't say printed in one line but let's see let's compare both of what we did with what we have okay 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 so giving this one what we should see so one two three four so one two three four that's correct then what we should do print after 4, we print 8, 12, 16. So I say 8, 12, 16. That's good. Then 15, 14, 13. Then 15, 14, 13. That's good. Then 9, 5. Okay, 9, 5. That's good. Then 6, 7. Okay, then 6, 7. Then 11, 10. 11 10 yes we did it see it's just boundary move it's not it's not that big deal just you need to learn how to move the boundaries so I just move them correct way bomb we all set there is no issue that's all that you need to do so and that's how we did it maybe you need to return as a return the information as array list well why not array list and array list of integer for sure and in this case you just define your array list of integer here and instead of printing it you're just adding to it you say okay array list of integer uh, super rail list will be equal to new instance of array list and here instead just every time I say a print to print I just say add dot add okay and and I think here this one and this one and this one nothing will change it's just different way of 
just make them without return or something. So now here when I'm done, I just return uh, super list. Okay. I should be good now. Here instead I just instead I just call it. I should return list. Okay, list element as super. Okay. And here I just need to do for each. I love for each and just you write one number. I <laughs> just do it element. Okay. I just print it. I should be good. And boom. I should be able now to print them. Same thing. So here we done. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. And welcome. Let me talk in this video about dynamic array. Dynamic array is very, very similar to array. One difference between dynamic array and array, it fixed the problem of fixed size. You remember when we talked about array and we said, yeah, the array is good, but it has a problem of fixed size. Fixed size could have two issues. One of the issues that you have to do the fixed size, you have not used memory, like memory location. You locate them, but you never use them. And this will be bad. And the second thing, you maybe need more element than the size that you define it. If you need more element than the size you define it, the array will not work. So there is, they, they have to come with another solution to solve this issue. And the solution was is dynamic array. So the dynamic array could solve these two issues. For It's not solve the problem not to use location completely, but it solved the problem is is uh, uh, let you say overfitting over overfitting like when your size will be more than overflow more than the defined size like you, you define five element but you need to hold six element so this is the nice about dynamic array so let me learn now how dynamic array structure work it's very very simple let me assume you define dynamic array you say okay i want to add number one to the dynamic array what it will do is very simple. It will just create array with one element, one simple element, okay, and have number one. That's nice. You want to say, okay, I need to add more. I need add number five. It will say, okay, okay, the size. I can't. You cannot add the size because not that element because I have only one location. First of all, let me double the array, okay, make it it was one location, make it two. Move that element here, so move that one, so I, I will have one here, and put five here. That's good. So first of all, I need to, here I need to double size, double size, then shift element from, from the first, from the first array. Okay, double size, then shift element to move it. Then let's go more. I want to add another element. Okay, I want to add in this time number 10. Okay, could I add number 10? No, because the array is full. Now I need to double the array. The array was 4, 2, I need to make it 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I need to first move my elements, 1, 5. And I need to add 10 now. Okay, add 10. So I had here, just remember, with the, so let me just highlight the place that we have to double the array size. We are here, we double the size. Here, we double the size. So we just remember them for future investigation. And now I want to add more elements, so let me just erase my pen. So in this case, let me use, suppose I want to add number 11. So when I add 11, say, okay, could I add 11? Yes, I don't need to double the array size. I could just add the 11. So same array I have it, which is 1, 5, 10. I have 1, 5, 10. I add one more element, which is 11. That's good. But now let me add another element, which is add number 4. Could I add four? No, because the array is full. Now I need to double the size of the array. See, double. Four now being eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight element. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I move my element, 11, and I add one element, four, and I have three location empty. So here also I had to double the array size. So let me just, just remove the rule. So here I have to double array size. So you see, always I double the array size. I solve the problem of overfitting 100%. Now I don't have issue. Whenever I have a new element, I just double the size. 
but not used location is solved but hard uh, half by half like we still may have like half of the array not used less than half array so now let me discuss the four fundamental concepts of big O so okay let's see let's see the four fundamental concepts what they say the first one uh, should be the search so for searching it is still array so to search for element you need n time until you find any element so it's still o of n okay the second thing for access to element again it is a still array to access to any element you could access to it by location of that element you access to this one by the location just give it the location you could access to it you don't need any addition help if you don't need any addition help access directly that means it will take O of 1 to do this process the two thing here changed from the array but still same <laughs> the insert and the delete okay for delete the, to insert element it's similar to array nothing changed to insert element you, you notice first time let me just go through scenario by scenario here to insert it was only it took you it took one O of 1 to do insert here to do insert I have to double the array size shave the element so I need to double and shave the element take me n time to shave the element so here take me O of n here it take me again O of n because I need to double the size here I didn't need to double the size I just was able just add the element it took me O of 1 here I need to double the size take me O of n what the worst case scenario for sure O of n or O of 1 O of n is the worst so and to do this process we need to O of n time to delete elements uh, or to add element insert element to the uh, dynamic linked list same thing for delete we also need O of n time because when you are yeah, let assume let we assume we are in this in this uh, position and we want to delete number 10 now we have two more location have double size not needed we need to go to the half so we need to reduce the array size from four location to two location and move the elements that's mean we need o of n time to shape the element so see the fundamental the four fundamental is still same so you didn't change anything it's still o of n to search access o of one insert delete o of n what we change or what we solve here is overfitting issue or overflow issue we no longer have thick size we did not solve the problem of the uh, thing of the not access uh, not used location but here in this case like if someone told you which one is better for accessing to uh, 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 to um, location is array or dynamic array both of them have same time to access both of them have same time for search same time for insert and delete but you tell them okay they are similar but the dynamic array is better in the case when we don't know the size of the array we don't have fixed size sometimes in our problem sometimes in our problems we have fixed size arrays and we don't need dynamic array but sometimes we don't want the size to be fixed for some reason we need to accept as much input as user input so let's assume the user we expect maybe input 10 users or maybe input 2 record or 5 record or whatever so in this case you don't need to fix it you need it to be a dynamic yep so here we done thanks for watching and see you next hey everybody let me do implementation for dynamic array in this video so to get started i will create a new class and i would name it dynamic array dynamic array i make sure to create my constructor okay cool so this is my dynamic array so what do you think in dynamic array you have to have first of all you have to have array but i don't want to specify the data type for array because the, the user have to be able to create dynamic array from any data type so let me suppose for as in the, from the first to be array of object so i would say as you say array of data object and make sure to mention this two bracket when i mention this two bracket that's mean hey this is array of object then the size of this array so i would say integer for size okay now let me go to the implementation first when the or when someone create an instance from dynamic array 
first thing you have to think about you create array with size like one element if so first of all let me give the size equal zero and the data equal a new instance of object with size one i will tell you not not ob not ob array new object okay object of size one uh, array of object of size one so what i mean by that i mean hey when anyone try to create instance from this class directory please uh, create array with one element so when he add element he already have it when he adds second element we will double the size what we mean here by size wait a second and you will understand what we mean by size and when we talk about capability the size like how how, how according to the size we, was, we would decide when we do capability ensure capability to extend the size of the array so wait a minute i would go next let me implement some method i would defend public integer get size so the get size return for us the size for the array so get size in this way so what do you think this method have returned to have returned for us the size of the array so data dot length so this is basically returning the size of the array let me do another method if you want to get specific element from array but here the array is type of object so you have to define that you have to allow the user to define the data type for this object so when to allow user to define the data for this object i would define generic so let me suppose t i add here t in the name of a stack so whatever data be defined i will have it here so let me define the element for get so public uh, for get i would say t the element you want to get it get he give integer for the index and we give the element for him so what we return we say hey we will return for you uh, casting for data for index did you get this point i i sh i'm sure you get it so now we have here array of object but we have to get flexibility for user maybe he define array of object string uh, integer character so i give it t generic so whatever if he define integer so now i have integer now if he integer when i do casting i do casting from object to integer if he send character i would do casting from object to character if he do string i would send do casting from integer to string this is basically how it's work but this is basically how we do get but the problem that happened in the put when someone put element in the array so let's suppose public okay for put so what you say put doesn't return any data then say put then what do you think integer the uh, the element that he want to add it so this is basically the object that he want to add so i would say okay i would the object will be data type t element okay because t is depend the you could say element you could say t up oh, element hopefully a element in this way you could say t or you could say object okay because the array is object so we when you receive object we get this object and we add it in the array but before we add it in the array so you know initially you say okay to add this element in the array uh, i just say uh, check, make sure from the size if i could add the element if i could add it add it. if i could not i say hey i could not add this element inside the array so first of all before i add any element i have to make sure if my array allowed to add or not so i will define method name it ensure capability so this method ensure sure capacity in this way okay and this one receive only the size plus one okay because I want to add to the next location. So ensure capacity, this method, in this way, I would define it public, void, okay, ensure capacity, receive integer, min capacity, and here you go. Now think about it. When first time, when what size I have it? Zero. Is that right? Zero. Cool. So what I will do, I will say hey make sure from 0 plus 1 1 because I'm adding a new element is is the size equal so it's not if it's not extend the array if yes just add element directory so let me think about how we extend the array so first of all I take the old capacity old capacity okay equal 
the the get size for sure that give me give me the old capacity the, the old size that I have it so I would say if the min capacity this one greater than the old size because if he extend the size that I have of the array for my array already if he pass the size so let you think about what you will do first of all we need to double the size so I would say integer a new capacity equal the old capacity multiply by two because I want to double the size of the array okay then then I could directly say hey here you go data equal just copy new element the data for, from the old array to a new array with a new size so I would say arrays dot copy of then well the origin the origin one is data and the length that I would say the length is the new capacity that's mean and basically I'm taking all the element I'm just creating new array a new data size with a new size then I move all the element from the old one to a new one but I just did it in one line so I could do different name but I just get like if it's five I get a new one ten I move it the, f the five element to the one half ten and I'm okay but in some cases maybe the new capacity will be less than the minimum when someone delete element so make sure to add this line I say if a new capacity this one less than okay the min capacity if it is less than then what you'll do say okay new capacity will be equal the min capacity this is some case when, when users delete element so this case may happen so just uh, try to avoid it add in this way so now here we go first of all before you he put the element he make sure if he could put it or not if the size for example now I have size one he say okay if the one and I'm sending one is the minimum one a greater than one no so he will not extend the size so now he have to add the element in the index array so if he say you have to write here data for the size a plus a plus add the element this element please add it for me okay that's mean hey add the element for example when he add next element the size is now one but here I have two so I say if the the two old size is one min new size is, is two so it is two so I need to take all size multiply by two spin two the new size and copy the element from array for size one to array for size two and here we go problem is fixed this is basically how you define everything for uh, dynamic array but let me do implementation for the dynamic array so let me create a new class I would name it dynamic array demo because this is do implementation I remove the constructor and I create this public here you go so what do you think how I could work with this dynamic array first I have to define dynamic array and give it the data type so what that type I want to save in this array let's suppose I want to add integer and so you have to use integer not a and t I would say dynamic array da a cool a new instance from this dynamic array same way that you did it do it here maybe you'll see this Do you see this problem yes here we go I just defined dynamic array with that tab integer now what's happened t here is integer so whenever t when you read you read as integer when you add you still add as object so let me suppose d a dynamic array dot put okay I want to put element what element I want to add 11 okay here you go put then pun 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 whatever 11 12 13 14 15 but let after adding every element we check the size okay and see what's going on system not system dot error sys o okay I want to check the size first of all I want to get the element let me just check in the size so I will say the size okay a cool da dot get size I will suppose get size yes get size will return size for me so after adding first element get size adding second element get size third element get size fourth element get size five element get size okay so let me just print and show you what is going on see when I add first element 11 the size is 1 when I add the second element now 1 have to be double the size being 2 
Now I have two element and the size array is two. When I add third element, I cannot add it. I have to double the size, the size being four. So he add third element. When he add four element, still the, he we could allow to add because my size array is four. So he still give me four. Now when he tried to add five element, he cannot add it because, hey, wait a minute. My size array is four. You need to double it. He changed the size to eight. So this is basically how to work. So now if you want to print any element, for example, it's supposed to say S Y S O S. You want to print anyone. You could print another element from the size. You say, okay, for uh, this way, integer i equal zero, i less than d dynamic array, i less than dynamic array dot get size, then i plus plus. Hopefully, then I will say S Y S O. Just printing the element to show you how I could print also. I will say dynamic array dot get. Hopefully, get will get as get element by index. I give it i. So whatever i be, I could print it. So yes. So let me just S Y S O. Hopefully, element save it. Okay. There we go. If I see the screen, if you see here, I have the element, the real size, say uh, the element save it is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I have null, 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 because this location doesn't have any data. Yes, and this size is still same. Yes, here we're done, and thank you for watching, and see you next. Welcome. Let me talk in this video about linked list. Linked list mean another different data structure. We save our element as a list of nodes the way how the data structure of linked list represent is this way like you start with the root you have a node the node have two things have value and have a pointer for the next element and this one again have a value and have a pointer referred to the next element this pointer is have complete location of the next element which have also value and pointer of the next element. If there is no more pointers, it will refer to nulls. I'll give you a simple example. If I suppose I have this element, 1, 5, 10, okay? And I want to represent them as a linked list. That's mean I have a first element as a node, have a 1, and have a pointer refer to the second element, which is 5, will have a pointer refer to the third element, which is 10 and 10 have a pointer referred to null because I don't have I don't have any more elements in this linked list It's very very simple way and you see it how we represent it As you can see it every element is a node. So this is node. This is node everyone everyone is node So it should be represented in the code as a class name it node and the node have two things as you see it have a value in our case here the value integer so integer value and it have node for the next because this is a pointer referred to the next node and it have same name of the class so this is how we represent the linked list as a single object every node is a class has a two things has a value which is in this case integer and have a node is the next location for the next element in the list so Always in the linked list, we have only we know only the location of the root. We don't know the locations of the other elements. So that means always we have a pointer that refer to the first location. So to calculate the four big O's things, to search first of all, search. I I want to search for example for number five, ten. I have only the root. So using the root, I could go to the next element. Let me change the pointer. Using the root that refers to the first one, I could go to the next one, which is five, is not, and then I could go to the third one. So I always have only first location. I don't have location of the five or ten, only location of the one. I could use it to search for the rest. That means I will take O of n time to find any element using linked list. What about access? I want to access to element. The same thing. As much as we have only the roots, that means I could to access element I need to go sequential so I need sequential time to access to element so that means also take O of N there is discussions about delete and insert there is two different way of implementing uh, the 
uh, link list some people think you could delete element from any location what I mean by that I mean by that I could uh, delete just this element okay I could remove it in this case I need first go take n time to rem to access to that element because I need access to it find it after I find it I need to remove it then when I remove it I just move the pointer from this one to refer to this one so I'm taking n time to find the element then remove it in this case o of o of n or delete time will take o of n okay some people say no I don't remove any element I remove only first element I don't remove any element allocation I have only the first one so on the first one you just remove it you have the pointer on it and you move the root pointer to the second one in this case you take this process take o of one so o of one so the delete may take o of n or o of one depend on the implementation of the linked list but usually you should be able to delete elements at any locations for that reason I prefer to make to call it as o of n not o of one same thing for insert assume you want to insert number 11 so I want to insert it after 5 in this case I create node here name it 11 have a pointer refer to the 10 and 5 for refer here and this one will go this this pointer will go so I had n time n time to find number 5 then to change it take uh, to change location and lo pointers will take constant time so uh, this also take n time to find to insert but again there is other other way to implement the link list the uh, insert same thing they say no we insert only in the first location thus mean uh, this element will not be inserted here always inserted will be inserted in the first location thus mean okay the pointer will go here will refer to this one and this one will refer to the second one in this case I don't need I don't need this point although again constant time or of one so it depends on the implementation of the link list but I prefer to refer all of them or of n because I want users to delete as in any location which that's the case insert at any location access to any location and search for element but this is not only think about link list this is the simple link list we could have a different type of link list so the other type of link list I want to discuss is in this tutorial or in this video is double link list and you will see the implementation of it double link list is similar to the link list but uh, here you have double pointer that means every element is not one is not just uh, value and pointer is have two pointer pointer one and pointer next previous and next all of them they are have every every node have a two pointer previous and next that's mean I have this node and have a next node next node will have again value and pointer for previous that's mean it refer to this one and pointer for the next I don't have it until yet this one the previous because it's the first one so the previous will be null the next will be this one and if I have a third node in this case what I will have this one should refer to this one and this one the previous should refer to this one value and this pointer if there is no more element should refer to nulls so it's, it's connected one by one and you could represent as a number if I just have same thing I have a number like a 3 10 16 same thing you just represent a three nodes a three 10 16 and you say okay this one should be 3 uh, it have uh, two locations sorry uh, I thought I could delete it by my hand but that does not the case here so 3 10 16 3 10 16 a 3 as a previous refer to the null because don't know null it's the start point as a next to refer to this one this one as a previous refer to this one as a next should refer to this one this one as a previous should refer to this one this one as a next should refer to the null again you have the 4 o the search uh, access delete and insert all of them are o of n still same thing when you want to search for element you need n time to go find it you need to access to element you need n time to find it you need to delete element in the end time to find it then you could like 
for example delete it and same thing to insert a new element same thing you need end time to find the location where you want to insert then you add that element then you change the pointers we will see the implementation how we change the pointers in the code most likely but I don't want to show them here on very high level the code will be will be much better to see how we just move the pointers from one to another better than very very abstract but the class for the node will be represented this way have a class node it will have for sure value in this case integer because the value have integer value or object to have pointer for the node the previous so the previous now I have a pointer for it and have another pointer for the next you will see this class in seconds so this is how it goes you have simple class have three things previous next you have two point because I have a three part previous next value so I have value previous and next so how are we done thank you for watching and see you next hey everybody let's talk in the video how we could do implement for link list in Java so first of all we talked about link list link list is number of node and every node have to think value and pointer for next element so let me do a proof for that I just will create a new class and I will name it this class node okay and I would just create only constructor so what do you think then would have then would have two properties first thing the value so I would suppose the value as object because I don't know what's the value what's the value data type and also the node for next index the pointer that's mean it is a node for the next element okay so here you go now I need to do initialize for these two things. I need to initialize the value and which the next next element I want to connect to. Here you go. And this I say this dot value equal well equal value and this dot next equal next. Okay. So just initializing. So yes, this is the basic node. Now we understand how the node work. Now let we think more. Let we think how to add node and how we could manage our link list. So to get started, I would do class name it link list. So here we go. In the class, I would name it linked list. I would give it a linked list and I would add name near it. I would say it, for example, you just to recognize it from origin link list that already implemented inside Java. So I'll link list you uh, and yes, here is it. So I would create constructor also. So make sure I'm creating constructor. So what do you think we have to now in node? We have to now only the root node. So or the head. So I would say node uh, head. You know when you have node, you have you know you have to now the index for the first one or the address for the first node because this is your point to now all other nodes. So when someone create node, I will not have any problem. I would suppose first of all, this one node head should be equal null. Okay, when he create the node. So now let me think about uh, other thing. Let me think about uh, if someone try to add node to the list. So just to memorize how the adding operation goes, we said, hey, when you have node. First of all, if you don't have node, create the node. So if you think about creating the node, you say public uh, void add, and the add will get the node. You could add node, complete node, or you could get value only, and he will create it as a node. So if you say add just object value, and we create node from this value. So when he send as value, I would say, hey, let me, hey, I'm getting value. Let me create a new node. A new node, I would say node equal a new node equal a new instance of node in this way just i'm creating a new node with this value and the next element let me suppose null i don't have any information now about the next element i'm just creating node so this is my node he sent me value i'm just adding this to the next then what well, the next element i'm just creating the node i will i would check first if i don't have any node that's mean if the head equal equal null that's mean I don't have any node that now I would say the head is the new node because this is my first element that I added in the in the link list so if I have this case do this operation otherwise that's mean else 
that we think about what we will do when we when we want to add node how you add the node first of all you say my the new menu uh, let me just show you draw when you have just a new node what we th said we say just we would take the new node and we add it here we make this node referring to the head then we make this one head so first of process we make the new node uh, point to the head and then we make it it's the head so first of all we say hey, okay the new node the new node the new node that we created dot next is the head so we make it refer to the head okay maybe i just did mistake next node let me just write it correct yes a new node not next node so first of all i make my new node refer to the head then i make the new node head as a head so i would say head or call the a new node okay this is just basic adding operation so this is how adding adding nodes so if you want to try add another node you say okay let me think about it how i would add it you say okay let me draw you say we take a new node we draw it we get pointer and value and pointer and this is what we did it here and this in this line we create a new node then we say if it's the head no this is not head so i have to go to the next so the next the next is going to this section first of all i make i make the new node refer to the head so this new node refer to the head then i make the head the new node so i just move the head here okay and we done so yes, this is basically how to do add operation. This is add operation. Let me go to the next. Well, how you think about delete? Let me do delete with of one. So I say public void. Okay. Uh, delete. Okay. I will say delete first element only. Only. I want to delete only first element. So how much this could take? As a big O, take O of one. Because I'm just adding first element. I'm not adding a specific index. If you want to add a specific index, it would be O of n. So how you would delete element? Let me think about it again. I have this node and this node. So and the delete operation is being only on head. So this one is the head. So to delete this one, first of all, I make the head refer to this element. Then I could delete this point. So it's really easy. Just I'm say I say head or call head dot next. Then that one is gone. It's destroyed already. Now I have it in the next element. Now let me think about how to display the nodes. I say public display, okay, in this way, and doesn't take anything. So what do you think to now, do you think you have to now to display the nodes? Let me just clean the screen for you so you would understand what I'm doing. Okay, so how you display the node? Public void node. So we said about the link list is just number of node and we need to know only the address for the first node and through the address of the first node you go to to the next and next and continue when we, the next is null that's mean we done so uh, it's really easy so let me suppose i define a new node i say new node equal the head so i'm just just doing a for loop over the nodes i will say while that this node n is not equal to null that means i'm not done i'm not in the end i'm not here i'm not here so continue so what i will do in the continue i will say okay so i say oh print this node for me how you print it i say n dot value but as i told you the value is object if you see the value of the node if you go to the node class the value is object so we need to change it to the specific that type so what we suppose here i'm adding t that's mean whatever linked list that type he define it, I will use it. If he define integer, this will be integer. If he define character, this T will be character. So I do casting for this one to the T. And when I'm done, I just go to the next element. So I say n equal n dot next. So this process make it allow us to go from first element to the second node, then third, then continue. So this is basically how we could do implement for uh, or how we could create the class that we would use it for using linklist but uh, this is not the calling this is just structure for it so let me do the call for this one so i would say create class i would name it linklist u 
demo here you go and make sure I create only the main method so what you think you need to know here is not too many information you say okay I would define link list and my link list will be from which data type you want to know it so let me suppose integer as I told you is not should not be only integer let me suppose string okay so I just don't confuse you always string string I say link list or call a new instance from this link list for that reason I just allow you to and for us, I use a generic here, so I could allow you to define which data type you would like to use. There you go. You know what 19 mean. 19 mean open and close bracket. So I want to add ls dot add. Let me suppose add Hussein. Okay. Let me suppose add more. Oh. Adding for loot. Jenna. Leia. And you know now the last element while okay I would suppose this, I want to display ls dot display then let me delete last element so ls dot delete then I would suppose ls dot display so I would delete only last element then display then delete last element then display hopefully now the code work he say hey you have a problem he say uh, null pointer is I don't know what he mean by here. He say main head a call when you want to delete element, you say head a call head next. So what is the problem? Why he think this one is not correct? So well, the second error, the second he only have error in delete or process. If I just remove, just take this off. So that we think about the problem first. I didn't see anything. Wow, 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 wow. Let me go back here. So just just go overview the code. So first of all, what we have, we say okay, the head, the new head, of call null when someone do construct. That's cool. When someone create a new node, I would just take it, create a new node, and check if the head is null, then the head is not head. The head is the new node. The new node is the head. See, this is the basic error that we have it. So this one is the head. If, if there is no node otherwise do this a process so that make this error for us some way somehow you would get a problem in your code you would get bags here you go if you see first of all you print while uh, this is for people then when we delete so it is supposed to have say so so after delete okay this suppose adding here before what before okay so here you go so before delete I would have while general so for the first one the first pointer is on while because the last one added will be first one in the list and then after delete you should delete while so I still have Leia and Jenna and Hussein this is basically how link list work thank you for watching and see you next hey everybody let me talk in this video how we could do implement for double link list with Java I would use same structure that I was in single link list uh, and single link list then I would just do modification so just to go overview what you think about double link list if, if you just remember from the previous video we say in double link list we have link list item and everyone have two pointer one pointer on the previous refer and one on the next so this one refer to this one and this one refer to the next one maybe null and this one refer back to the, this one so this is the process so let me start by just modifying what we have here we have single node let me create another node for double so I would suppose here creating a class I would suppose node D okay for, for example this for double created so I just take everything for node normal node and I just move it to node D okay so what do you think about node D? Node D have next also have another node for previous so I would suppose a previous in this way so I have the previous address not only the the next address so I have it here this is should be constructor for node D so also the previous should be in this way so I would say this dot previous or call previous here you go uh, if I just take line just 
uh, doing shiraz for everything now i have link list you ha you know i have her simple link list for you i would do a link list for great sync list for double okay for doubly link list so yeah i just created and just copy all the code from you to it so i just copy this one and move it to the d so what do you think we have here I just still have node, but not normal node. I have D node. It should be the head. That's cool. I have here the constructor. I just constructed by nothing. Yes, that's good. Now I, when I want to create new node, so I would first I will create my new node from that tab. I don't have anything, any information about next and previous. So let me send them null because I don't have any information. If there is nothing in the head, this be the head. That's cool. I will not change anything. But think about it. If you want to add a new node, how you would add it? First of all, you want your example. If I just suppose, I just suppose the draw. I want just. I have this that structure. So I have this in new node. So this node have next and previous. The next should refer to the uh, head. And the previous should refer to the null because there is no null in it or no previous element. So I would say, okay, the new node dot next should refer to the head. Okay. And then the head should be the new one. Okay. I don't have any problem. This is when you add it in the beginning. But wait a minute. I, when I add you here, but the first one. Uh, sorry, this one you could make it refer to the last element, you could refer to anyone. But let me think about at this point. I don't know why there is a problem here. No D, no D. Why he say here there is a problem? There is a problem. Hopefully, there is no problem here. Maybe there's just some coding problem. Now, uh, still, whenever you add any one element, this one will refer to it as previously. Okay, yes. Uh, you add the new node, the new node should refer as an X should refer to that one, but also that one as a previous should refer to it. So you have to say, okay, before you just move it, you say head, the old head dot previous should refer to new node. Okay, a new node, this one. Because when I'm adding a new node, first of all, so I say, okay, my new node as an X image will refer to the head. And also I say head, the previous one is my new node. Then I just move the head to it. And that is. Okay. Hopefully now, I I don't have any problem. I would say I don't have any problem now. Because I think node D, node D. And hopefully there is no problem with node D as an X and a previous yeah i think i think no no problem here but maybe you will find it now one i want to delete imagine i want to delete this node first one what i would say i would say the head should be moved to the next one and also the head dot previous should be null because i don't have any information about the the previous one just move it to the next i don't know why he always he give me error here he say hey changing node i wish i think node d here i have a problem yes this should be not node should be nd node d because this is a new node that structure so everything should be nd nd and this way node d up node d oh sorry node d and uh, node d and uh, d Yes, it's basically I just, just I don't change it well. So now if I go back, hopefully the problem fix it. Yes, when I delete element, I just move the head to the next element. Then this one as a previous, I give it null because you don't know how much about null. Next. Now that we think about it, how it's work. First of all, node D, the new node. Well, I just want to display the element. I take first element. Then I just do casting. I just display element by element end dot value. I don't know why he t he don't know t. So I have to say hey. This is the T, so you would know it. Now I just have 
double necklace that mean i i have address for next and a previous so i could go from no one to the next to the next to the next to the next and then could, i could go to previous 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 and i be in the end and this is the idea for double necklace so let me think about how to how to do implementation for this one i would just create it a new class give the same name demo and create I would not do some complex work I say I would take same thing I did it here for the normal link list and just move it to the new, li new link list D demo and make sure instead you I add D and instead you here add D I, will, I did not have a new everything same I just a new link list but W link list yes here we go here we go and everything is cool so this is basically how you could do double link list you would not see any change in that structure here you same still you have same adding you still have same x same display same uh, delete and everything but if you see uh, the change we change the structure of when we add a new node still here we change it we say okay the new one will refer to the head and the the head preview us will refer to it then i move it this is how i could go back and also you say uh, when you delete also when i delete it i move it to the next and the previous one he added null and also when it display same thing so this is help you we will talk about tree and how we could apply this data structure so make sure you understand it well thank you for watching and see you next and welcome let me talk in this video about one of interesting problem have been seen a lot with tech companies such as google microsoft apple so what this problem is the problem is you given a link list delete element at kth location from the end for example if i tell you delete element as k equal two from the end that's mean you say this is the end this is one this is two i'm going to delete this one okay so you need just to delete it i need to connect this element to that element what if i told you delete the third element from the end you will say one two three i'm going to delete this one okay but why this problem is interesting? The problem is interesting because in the necklace you don't have a lot of information. All what you know is the root. So in the question, all what he give you, he give you the root node. And he tell you, okay, this is the root. Please delete element at k equal 2 or at the k equal 3. And you, may, you need to make sure your necklace is still as it is. So how we do that? How I could now the element at the k location? This is how we come to the new concept, or you will use it a lot in the job interview, which is fast and slow pointer. So to solve this problem, I would be using two pointers, one of them fast and one of them slow. The fast will always have kth location between it and between the slow. For example, if the slow location, if or the I have a slow pointer, slow, and you I have fast pointer, okay? So the pa the fast location always will be slow plus k. So if k equal two, that means you would have the. Sorry, uh, I think I need to just go back. So if k equal two, what will happen? Your uh, slow pointer. Let me represent the slow pointer by the red one. So here is the red, and the my fast pointer should be plus two since the k equal two, so the fast will be here. I represent it by green. So now, this will be my start point. Then, they both they both move together. That means I will have my uh, slow pointer will be now here. Then what will happen? My fast pointer will move one more location. Okay. Now for sure, this is no longer anymore here, and this one is no longer anymore here. Now, the slow pointer will be moving at one more location. The fast pointer will be moving another one location. So the two slow or the previous will go away. Now my slow pointer will be moving one location then my fast pointer will also going to move one location okay 
So what the condition? The condition is very clear now. When the fast pointer reach the end, that is mean. What does that mean? That means I'm the last location. I'm going to delete what? The, the next one. Okay. So all what I'm doing instead 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 this one or my node is referring to this. My node will refer to that node. Okay. So. That's what you got to do. So it's not, it's not a very, very hard problem to solve, but you just need to learn the concept of the slow and fast pointers. Okay. So let's get started and try to code this problem. I would just use my clips. And if you remember, we already talked about uh, nodes of the, of the linked list. We'll have a value on the next, and this is the constructor. And we learn some operations and linked lists, such as how we add element to the linked list, how we delete specific one, how do we supply all the element on all these. So I'm not going to repeat what I just said. So I will just go back to here and try to implement my solution. I have a very, very simple example, which is linked list. Have a six nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we just see, if I just try to run the code, it's just simple linked list. It's from six connected to five, five to four, four to three, three to one, and that is is very it's similar to to this one. So six, five, four, three, two, ones. We say we will have two pointers, slow and fast. So giving that, you could implement. You could implement it at any. You could, you could implement my solution at anywhere. Uh, I but I would create my own method. So I just make my my things easy. So I would name my method is void uh, delete uh, case element. Okay, and I would assume this method will get two things. We'll get the root node, which is in this case. If link list or the name of my nodes, it's named node list. So it will be either just a node. So I say node list as a node or as a root. Uh, it will receive the kth element I want to delete. Okay, the k. This is a very, very simple method. I would use it to just delete the kth element from my link list. So when I just want to call this one, since I'm inside this class and this one is not static, I could do it two ways. I could say just this one is static and I just call this element because it's Java. Okay, so uh, the root will be what? Will be my link list head. So this thing is my link list. So link list dot head. Okay, and the kth is whatever kth I want to do. For now, I would say two from the end. So I want to give you link list head. If you remember, link list head is a pointer referring to the first element in the link list. In this scenario, so it should refer on, on six. So I'm sending location of six or the first one with I want to delete number two. I would like to, after I delete it, I just would, do, would like to print my uh, list. So I would say display and I would say just print message. So make sure you clear the difference between both after delete okay so it just like i want to know like okay this was the first call before delete this what was six five six five four three two one and after the re six five four three two one because uh, i am not i did not date anything i don't have any code implemented yet i just now want to delete that element i should if i say k equal two i got that the delete to here. So we go back, we said we have slow and fast pointer. So the slow should be on the uh, first location and the fast should be on the kth plus. So f as a start point, both of them will be on the, on the root. So I would just define my uh, list node. Uh, I would name it slow PTR. And this one should be referred to the root as a start point. And I have another list node. And this one should be fast. P, T, R should refer to the root. So both of them as a start point, as a start, as an initial thing, as initial, 
I, both of them they just refer to the root because because I have not did anything just I have a slow pointer fast both of them are on the root as I said the fast pointer should be as a point of the slow plus k so I need to move it k locations so that's mean I will just say while uh, k greater than zero what I do I say fast ptr equal fast ptr dot next okay and I would say k minus minus that mean like since first both of them on the root and k equal 2 so they both is here so the first is right the pointer will move here and the k will be equal 1 then the first pointer will be here and the k equal 0 then we done now I ended up by okay I am gonna have I'm now having two pointers until this code the first one is here and the slow one is what is here okay now I could just uh, delete the elements or now I now I just now I have the fast and slow in their in their locations what I want to do now is just move both elements and the same way like both element now they are going to or both pointers will be moving as the same at the same time so that's mean okay I'm done I would name this part of the code move fast PTR to uh, slow plus k so it's very simple plus k okay now I just go to both of them will move together so I would just say I'd say while uh, my uh, fast PTR because my fast PTR always the one who is in advance uh, dot next uh, is not equal to null I'm just moving the both both pointer. I, I would say okay slow ptr equal slow ptr dot next and fast ptr equal fast ptr dot next okay so now while the fast point pointer is, is not his end is not in the on the end they just move together when they when this while loop will stop this while loop will stop when the fast pointer become at uh, this location because his next is null and the slow pointer will be in, in this location okay because they move together so there's always k plus in advance now okay I know what I'm going to delete I want to delete the next element I'm in this location and I want to delete this one I want my pointer as a slow as a next will not refer on to this one it will refer to that one instead so how are you going to do that it's not very hard because what I'm going to do I say okay my slow PTR dot next will be slow ptr dot next dot next okay so it's very very clear you say okay my slow pointer instead referring to this one to referring the next of the next so it will refer on the five now i'm gone two is gone so now i just run it and see can i so if i have six five Four, three, one. I got two odds. Good. Yeah, that's what I did. Now, what if I want just to delete the third element from the end? So in this case, I'm going to delete a three. So just run it. I have six, five, four, two, one. That's right. I. Uh, what if I want to delete the uh, k equal one? So that's me the last element. Okay. So let's see will I be able to delete it because this is very important you test the edge cases yeah I have six five four three two now one more thing when this code will going to break because this is how the how the interviews goes it's just like discussion it's not just solve a problem 
just discussion. He told you, okay, what if I want to delete the sixth element, the last one, or the first one? Okay. Okay, let me try and see what's going to happen. So the code break. Why? Well, I don't have any pointer anymore because if you say I delete six, that's mean you say one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm deleting this one and now I don't know where the head is, is heading. So I want you to think about this, how you solve this edge case. Let me talk a little bit about the homework for this section. So imagine you have two linked lists. First linked list have this element, have one, five, 10, 15, 20. The second linked list have this element, five, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you have to combine these two linked lists, but in this way, you have to take first element from first linked list and the last element from the second list linked list. So you have one, 14. Then you go some process. Second element from preview before the last, you say, I have five, then 13. Then you continue 10, 12, 15, 11, 25. Now what I want from you to think about this problem and how it could be solved. Before, before now, just pass this video and think about it before I write, I give you a hint for solution. Pause the video. Okay, now you're done. Let me start thinking how to solve this problem. If we go to this problem, I try to draw it. What do you think about it? You say, okay, I have link list, first link list. So in this way, and I have second link list. The problem that you face it in this, in this uh, process, is for every necklace you have only address for the first element you don't have address for the last element how would access to it so it'd be hard and difficult for you but if i want to ask you to use the best way optimal way less using of memory and other stuff so how would you think about it okay let you think about stack you say okay i would have stack this about this one f a b c d you would add the second one inside the stack so I would add A, B, C, and D. Okay, and you're done. Let us suppose this one E, F, G, H. Now if I want to combine them, I would take first element and pop last element. Second element, pop C. There, B, H, A. Did you see how I combined this to that structure? But what's the type of this stack? What do you think? Array or dynamic array? Or linked list stack? Should be linked list stack to save the memory because you know how much element you would have it. Yes, this is how to solve this problem. Thank you for watching and, it, and you have to write the implementation for this code. Again, let me talk in this video about comparison between a linked list and array. So which one is better when we should use what? So an access to when you try to you when you try access to the memory location. Basically in the linked list you need O of n time to access to any element because you need to go through element by element until you reach that element. In uh, array you need O of 1 because array index it. So basically if you compare O of 1 with O of n so the best definitely would be a O of 1, okay? So in this case, in the access to memory location, array is better than linked list. That's good. So for, for the memory, the space that use it. So both of them, the space complexity for them is O of N, okay? But the, the linked list is better than array list. Why? Because array list, uh, array, when you define array 10 element, you may use only five element of them. And you have five, you don't use them. You may define 1000 and use 500 and 500, you just waste them and you don't allow anyone else to use them, but you just waste them. The, the issue with the memory with linked list, every uh, node represented by pointer 
and value which could be less than uh, that case when you have this in, in the worst case scenario it is better than having array like 90 percent of, of from the array empty so i we would go in the memory uh, for the uh, a link list is better than array even both of them o of n in the search when you want to search for element in the link list you will you will you will need o of n time to find element same thing for array you need o of n to find element in the array but which one is better okay to move between one to to do the search in link list you need to move from one pointer to the next pointer and next 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 until you access to the element that you wanted but in the array you're just going from one index to another you don't need pointer to refer to the next pointer and something like that to allocate you just go through index sequential so here in this case even both of them off in but array is better than linked list the fourth one insert and delete insert and delete when you want to insert or delete element in linked list. Linked list have two two scenarios. We said it have either O of N for insert and delete or, or it have O of 1 for insert and delete in, in case we want to insert elements in the first location or delete element from the first location. So I would go now with O of 1 scenario for the linked list. If I go with O of 1 scenario the array in this case for insert and delete always at O of n because we have shifting when we delete or insert element we need to shift other elements to delete one element sometime or in the worst case or uh, shift element when we add elements so in this case of the link list is better I, as again as i told you and we took the case for link list when we add and delete element in the beginning of the link list but what if i pick the scenario of o of n when you could delete any element from any location in this case they will be equal but in general scenario but they well, what the basic of the other book said and here is better because the possibility of shifting there is no shifting even with o of n is still 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 with o of n is still the link list better because you just need move pointer from one to another you don't need to shift other elements so this is the basic comparison remember whenever you have these two options available for you to design something remember this this table and see okay in this in scenario of accessing fast i would go with array list in scenario of memory use i would go with link list in search i would go with array list and insert and delete and go with link list sometimes you don't have a lot of insert and delete you just have data ready from the server you needed and you, you did it one time and you need to access to it multiple time in this case you think which one i should use you load it one time that's mean insert and delete it happened only once while there is a lot of times you need to to, to do access to the element or search for the element so this happened a lot and time this happened one time so which one you should pick definitely we will pick the array list why because array list here in this in this scenario it is it is better and for end time you doing uh, it, it is better for access and search while here insert and delete happen only one time so you don't care if link list better this is the scenarios you have to compare these both and when you should use what again if I got example, have a lot of add and delete and I have less access, definitely I will go with linked list. But if I have I have a problem, have a lot of access and have one time loot, I definitely go with array list. Okay? So here we go. Or here we done. Thank you for watching and see you next. Welcome. Let me talk in this video about hash map. Hash map is one of the best data structure that you see it in any any sort of job interview question because they really care about data structure to solve a lot of types of problems let me see some type of problem that uh, hash map use it for basically the search engine so let me assume i have search engine whatever search engine it is google or bing or yahoo there is a page you have it from wikipedia okay and 
it is same page is copied by other page or by other website which is s.com and same page it copied by a third website which is t.com the question now here how the search engine will understand how the how he saw the results i will tell you the basic scenario for it if i have a, ser a hash map in the search engine I have a three cell for now just simple three cells we will go through the more complex hash map and in this hash map what it will, what will do the search engine it will take every page content and try to hash map it so let us suppose i have this hash algorithm so when i have this page input to the hash it will give it a specific index for example index zero this is zero this is one this is two that's mean this page will go under index zero so this is for wikipedia okay when the same content from other page go to the hash map it will get same key so both of them will go under same node both of them will have s.com same node same thing for the third page even to go to the hash algorithm because it's the same content of the wikipedia both of them they store same content so both of them will get same index so it will be t.com in this case when there is a query come searching for that page it will directly take it to this index and what the search engine will search only in this place in the in the in the in the database it did not, it don't search for the in the rest of the database it's for efficiency search only in specific place because it now what you were looking for so it just match match faster so think about you have search engine like google they have hundred millions of 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 uh in locations in the array and every location have a hundred millions of uh, pages indexed it, you go only f search in specific location in the array search for list of index instead of searching entire database this is a basic scenario definitely google search engine will not be that simple as hash map but definitely it follows same standard in the searching so this is how simple hash map works but let me just try to see how we could build our own hash map when you talk about hash map you have to think about two things first of all hash map is a combination of array and linked list so first of all you say okay it's a combination of array so i should have an array let's assume my hash map size is 10 that means the array has a 10 location 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 location that's good so this is uh, my array and i define the array size for link list or for hash map is with array of size of 10 so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay now let's do some adding operations i have multiple ads i want to add some numbers but the way the hash map is work you have key and value key it refer to which index your 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 data in and the value is where you store your value we will learn this in seconds if i have a first element with key of 4 and value of a okay what will happen it will we will take the key with number 4 we hash map it let we assume i have very very basic simple hashing algorithm which n remaining on the size of the array which is 10 okay this is my hashing algorithm so in this case if i hash map uh, 4 the remaining of 4 by 10 how much to stay the remain is 4 so that means this one is located here this is where a located but still i could access to it through 4 as a key okay good i have another element I want to add for this we suppose I have a 10 so one B in this case here I in the hashing it I will take 10 I do what remain of 10 over 10 the remain is 0 that's mean this one will go here and this is my link list always both of them by the end they go to the ground okay so I have B and still B have index they have a key of 10 now let's take another number let me suppose i have for example uh, what you want a 20 okay i say add a 20 
as a key and the value is c so the remain of 20 over 10 what it's zero what's the what the remain is zero that's mean it go under this index index number zero so i don't have ground now my now is connecting to c but the c have a key of 20 okay that's good let me just clean it it have a key of 20 and so on and so forth i have for example 8 i have 8 d in this case 8 will the remain 8 over 20 it will be all of 8 stay so that's mean 8 location i will have a cell or link list name it d it have a key of 8 now go more like i want to add whatever i want to add uh, uh you want to add 12 maybe or 14 14 as a key and the e as a value you say 14 the remain of uh, 10 i will have 14 what the remain is 4 so it will be in the index 4 though now here i don't have end i have here uh e okay which will have in key of 14 and the end okay this is how it works so i here i did use it very basic simple hashing algorithm it just it take the number it do the remain by the size of the array again it is the number and remaining by the size of the array there's many many types of hashing algorithm i use it the basic one but what are you seeing here? You're seeing here now, my data is very well organized. I have multiple uh, location in the array and every location I may have multiple elements and every element have a key and value, key and value. So very, very nice. So now when I go, I say, hey, search for four. What it will do, it will take four, it do remain by 10. The remain by 10 is, so the remain by 10 is 4 so it will go search in here for 4 but still as a key 4 so it now it here is the 4 yeah you find it to return for you a okay and uh, same thing when you do whatever uh, you do for example uh, 8 it will say okay k8 over 10 it will be 8 as it is it will go search for the 8 location in the array say hey here's the eight. here's here's the 8 I find it if you look for 14 you say okay 14 over 10 that's mean 4 so just go search for 14 it will say okay I will go here uh, for 4 it will go search here okay where is 4 this is 4 where is 14 and 4 here is the 14 and 4 and very very basic nice way to get this value so see even they are different keys 4 and 14 but both of them they go under same location but different link lists so this is how to basically uh, link list work uh, or hash map work you have a array and you have every location you have a link list every location you have a link list of elements and you could access to them and you saw how we could read how we could write and how we could do different uh, processes with uh, with link lists so link list again we need to talk about the complexity we have three complexities here we have search when i want to search for something and when i want to insert something and when i want to delete something so when you want to search for something you saw the basic example was I'm get, i get whatever key you want through the key i could go to the uh, array and from that i search for example you saw like when i search for 14 first of all i say 14 over 10 equal 4 until now it's constant time constant time i get 4 now 4 is my location is here but here i have array list i need to search n time to find where is 14 located which is here so here for the, the search will be n time why because the link list inside location so o of n same thing for insert when you want to insert you do the key you go to the location that you want to insert on for example let's we assume eight here you want to insert but still you need to go end time until find where you would insert okay again this is a two way of talk some of them they say of one and some people say oh of n 
when you say off one you it depend it depend on the implementation okay people say off one if you want just add it add the new element as the first location you say okay okay let me take the scenario of one you say why off one insert you say okay I got the key the key will take me to this location which is for example four and I would just add the element here in the beginning just change the pointer and add the element so this will cost me off one time to add the element but some people say no you don't add it in the beginning you add it in the end of the link list so in this case if you add it in the end of the link list you need end time to go to the end until find that location so in this case it will take end time so it is two way of implementation it depends on how you implement your link list i would go with the here with the option of o of one if i if i prefer o of one because i want to insert under it in the first location in the in the link list because how this how to work if you just if you don't understand why of one i will take this example so it will be very clear okay i would say let me assume i have another number i have mm, 24 okay so 24 as a key and as a value uh, let me just clean it you have a key 24 i want to add with key of 24 and with a value of f okay for so 24 as a key the remain by 10 will be 4 so that's mean we are going here the basic scenario you say okay no i will add my node here which is f i move the pointer to this one and this one will go to this one and i no longer need this in this case uh, your uh, the complexity or the add complexity of one is constant time but what if someone say no you need you don't need to add in the implementation here you need to add it in the end so i need to go here search you go to the end you add your element which is f here with a 20 and this one go to the ground in this case you need o of n okay it depends on the implementation for me i would go with o of one here so i would say okay insert under it is o of one why because i always want to add insert element in the beginning but the delete is not necessary to be <laughs> the beginning <laughs> so i say okay for my insert this one i will add it here for insert of one here so i will say here for the delete so how we delete the element from the array okay if i ask you hey could you please delete uh, for example the one has a key of 20 someone has key 20 says delete it you say okay first of all 20 as a key divided by 10 i will have zero that's mean i'm you will ask me to search here in this case until now i'm constant time but here i've linked list i have to search for 20 where is located here is it i need n time to find that element then i delete it so definitely o of n to to uh, to delete element in the hash map because i need n time to find element to delete it but insert could be O of 1 and it could be O of N. It depends on the implementation. You could either pick this one or pick this one. It depends if you want it in the beginning or you add it in the end. But all the online things, they just added in the end. So just add in the end. For me, in this tutorial, I will use O of 1. I just want faster. So I will add in the beginning. So, yep, here we done. And thank you for watching. And see you next. Hey everybody, let me talk in this video how we could do implement for hash map. So what we what do you think about hash map? I just remember to you to just say we have array and every array have a number of element connected to it. This is should be linked list. But now I want to go with you in more details and I want to talk about that structure for this element. Before we said only we have value if two elements have same value i cannot save them in in, uh, in same index so the good idea to implement your hash map table you save key and value what i mean by that every node have key and have value so and have key and have value so if they are located in the same location you could recognize one from other by the key 
this is the idea so to get started let me do a simple package for no node because it looks like too many class I will use I, so I would say my package will be com dot ds dot hash okay then I'll they finish so here you go now in the hash how many class I have for first thing I have entity so what I mean by entity in entity and I would say hey a great constructor for me so in theory we said every element in the hash map should be contained two things key and value I mean the element in the link list so yes so what do you think you have you have integer for key key always be integer and you would say you would have object for the value because you don't know which value be, will, should be stored maybe string maybe integer maybe whatever value okay and also you have as we said we said when we talk about link list so we would have array and if or hash map every element key value and link it to another element so should be link list here the data structure for key and value for that reason i have to have next element so i would say okay uh, i have next element should be entry next element that i am connected with so yes let me talk about constructor. So what do you think in constructor? First of thing you have let we do initialize for the for this constructor. I would say key, I'm getting the key, pop pop pop. Hopefully there is no problem. And I'm taking getting the value as input. Let me do initialize for both of these. You say okay, this dot key or call the key and this dot va value or call the value okay this is basic initialize for this constructor so also this entry let me do initialize for first time and i give it now so so i d i don't have so when you have add one element i don't have any element after it i would create another constructor because i would use it and this constructor doesn't take any input but only i give the next call now because maybe i don't send any input this is for the array when you create array of items okay so when you get instance from them so you have every element have to be as initial value or null doesn't have anything but then you try to hash thing and add it to the array so at the first point you have to give it null this is the idea yes so let me add two methods first of first one is uh, just just getting key if you want I would say public okay okay uh, get key and uh, should return for us return the key make sure this public integer is that right yeah and also we have to do another public okay uh, should be object because the would should be object the value so get okay value okay here you go and I would return the value there you go I just created this also this is all the method that I would need it from entry I would need this is all the information that we have to have it for every uh, entry in the link list we said we said we have item and item have key and value we define the key we define the value we define the next element that you have to connect to by here and we did constructor for them we did constructor for the array for first thing when we create array so I said when first time when we create the array we need to do initialize for the element of this array and also we define reader for get key and get value this is basically how you define or how we define or hash or hash key element now wait a minute we just create the entry there is many work we have to do so let me create another class and I would name it hash table or hash map whatever you say it. let's suppose hash table I would implement it now hash table using array you could implement the data structure you would like but I would implement it using array I would give generic T so uh, to allow user to define any data type for the value because you know the value here I'm defined as an object so I want to allow user to add anything as a value maybe he want to save string maybe integer and character so I would say T so yes so now let me go and more details with you and share with you how we implement what we need so basically what we need 
if I just go back again to draw, we need to have array and this array of entity. Okay, and every element doesn't have anything. This has initial value. Every element is null. Okay, so initially I have array. So I would say, okay, I have entity array. Let me suppose array for hash. Okay, and I would suppose I have the size. Okay, I would suppose size small will be easy for me. So first of all, when you anyone want to create hash map, let me suppose he would send the size for the hash map. He say, okay, I want to add, add a great hash map with two, four, six. For example, you want to get a six. So whatever I get from here, I would say, okay, this dot size equal the size. So I define the size my ha for ha my hash map. Then I have hash array. I want to initialize it. I would say hash, this hash array, this one, sorry. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Let me suppose, sorry. This hash array equal a new instance of entity with the size they ask it so whatever the size I would have hash for that one if you see this is just a structure of when we define structure array of object but this object is not initialized we have to initialize every element in this array so every element have to get initialized in this array so I have to do for integer I equal I equal for integer I equal zero then I less than the size then I plus plus I just want to do initialize for the element of the array just just initialize them because you cannot use array of objects without initialize them so I would say equal a new entry okay just just that so when he called this entry you know what he will call he will call this method this one so as we say we just define everything now so he will define array for him and all the element of the array next element is null next null next null and next null everything I just define I initialize my const my structure for the for the hash now now let's go to the next now we need to add node every node have key and value and should be hashed to specific index okay that's what we think about it this one hash it and maybe uh, this one have more than one and here you go so now first process you have to think about it is the hashing how we could do hash so let me suppose I would do integer um, get hash okay so when you send me any key because we save element and key and value so I'm hashing only the keys make sure about this point I'm just hashing the key only so let me take this one over so this one here one yeah here you go i'm get hashing key so i will return what i will return the key mod the size you understand what the, this this mean this mean i take the key and give the mod by size like the example that we did before so whatever you key whatever you you send me like for example you have this element if i just use the draw again i just have for example this element i send i get entry with key and value you would send the key for this method and this method give us hash and save it to specific index for example handle it here okay this is basically what I mean by this point again let me continue with our example with six element two four five six whatever you want to do it do it here you go yes so basically we just now create the hashing now let we do put and get okay so to do put and get so let me suppose I want to do the method for put as a first method so public void I want to do put so what you put you put two things integer for key and object for value because I don't know which which data you would want to save so I object for value here you go First thing I want to know when you create single node for me, what I want to do from you, want you just send me a node with key and value. Just send me key. You just send me key, and you send me value. First of thing I need to do hash for this key. Okay, I'm hash it. So I want to do hashing. So I would say integer. I would say hash index equal. I'm getting hash for the key. Okay. 
So I'm sending the key to get the hash for it. Now what is what this process do? You know we have the array, okay? And now I understand. I now by doing this hash process, I understand which uh, where should be located this key. So I, for example, should be located in index zero here. So now. I have to add it in that index. So I have how to I would add it. First of all, I need to now because this one may be connected more than one element. First of all, may I have to take the next element that connected to the cell. So like link list. You say okay, enter uh, array value equal this array hash that I have it for what? For the hash index for this index. I'm just taking this basically. I'm saying hey. Let me see which element connected to this one. Maybe more than one element. Give me the index for that element. If there is no index, you will give me null, for example. So I don't have a problem. Now I would define my entry. I would define my entry a new, a new hash or a new, a new item. If suppose I'm adding a new item, should be a new entry. Okay. So let me take this one with key and value. I have the key, and I have the value as this one. So now I just define my entry new item. I just define, I say, hey, I'm defining new entry with key and with value. And I know which index I have to connect it with. That's cool. So let me just connect it. How do I connect it in the same way you connect linked list? I say next our new item dot next equal the array value dot next not array value dot next just array value dot next yes array value dot next then I would say array value dot next equal the element I just do swap between them so equal a new item so what I mean by this process I would show you again and again because this is really interesting when he said we have array, is that right? Yeah, that's right. We said we have, we send us key and value. That's what happened here. We send, I send you key and value. You get the hash for this key. So you look for the hash. Now you know, for example, this key should be saved here. But here, maybe there is already element connected here. So what you would say, you would say first, you say, okay, where is the, give me this item here and tell me which the, next element that you connected to it maybe null and maybe any element that's cool i will take this two thing and i will change them to entry that i mean change them to key and value as an object now i have everything set up now i say okay this one should be point to this element and this one should point to this one back link list when you add a new item for the link list this is basically what we did in the put now what the next process for sure get so I will say public t for get okay so integer you sure you send me the key and I get you the element so uh, how we work first of all let me suppose t the value that I wanted so I, the value is not available so let me suppose it's null because as a first point I don't know the value then I say okay hey return the value maybe maybe he look for thing that's not available so I say okay this element is not available so now how I find the element according to the key so first of thing we need to do hash we have to take the key and do hash to understand where is this key located so now after I'm doing hash for this key what I what I have to do I understand the the array element that where is located so I understand for example he is located here so I just take it I say okay I understand for example you say okay I now have this array or for example, you say, hey, uh, if I say it here, give you this example. Wait a minute. If I say here, this is my element. So when you take get the key, after you hash it, you understand, for example, it is here. But maybe there is more than one element connected here. So you take it the address for the first element, like what we did here. Now you do normal uh, linkless operation you just move on to find the one that associates with the same key cool so you say okay while 
uh, this is array value is not null so it's not we i didn't end up same process that we thought we do it in the normal operation i say if array value dot get value or get key equal my key that's mean this is the element you say okay the value will be equal i'm do casting for t for uh, array element dot get value because get value is object so i want to do casting to the data type that i'm using so here you go i find it then do break i'm no longer need to continue so if it's okay can't if it's not just go to the next so you say okay array or call array dot next we just go to the next element yes here we go just let me just ignore this error for this time and i will be back for it if i call it and i have same problem so now let me think about hashing so i was i would go here and i would create my class i would name it hash demo then i just create not the constructor i will create this method so what do you think to create hash map so to create hash map first thing you define your hash map you say okay i would use string data type as input you say hash map equal a new instance of this one also should be string and i would not send i would send the size for example 10 for this hashing so you, you could send any size but i would say okay i'm using 10 element to save this my hashing so hash map let me add element so i say hash map dot put i would say put let me key 11 and the value uh Hussein. okay and you could add more 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 it's up to you so let me suppose adding and ending so 12 gina 13 Leia, and you could do more let me just read i would say as well so i read specific key i would say uh, let me suppose i would say hm say hm hash map dot get i'm getting a specific key so let me suppose i want 13 that's mean i mean layer oops now everything is cool so let me just go back here and see where's the problem okay if you see this is value it's different from this one they have to be same spell so make sure write them correctly so you will not have any problem so now if i run it layer see here you go if i say give me 11 you have to give me hussein this is basically how hash map works do you see how we take element hash it save it then how we read it there we done and thank you for watching i guess start with the third type of questions you most likely going to see when you do interview as a software engineer with one of the big tech companies this question is related to hash map or how you solve your problem using a hash map so if you don't know hash map in your favorite pro programming language please just go on the internet and search for it and learn how to use it because in this video i'm going to teach you only how to solve the problem with hash map so one of the questions i got from the previous video some students mentioned like that it's hard for them to understand how they can solve a problem so in this uh, lesson what i'm going to do i'm going to teach you step by step the problem solving like how you take the problem how you break it down to small problems then how you combine them together so the three questions we're going to solve this in this uh, tutorial in this lesson will be fi find the most common word so i give you like someone give you a sentence of words and you should return the most uh, common word so on, based on this one if you see bob hit a ball the hit ball flow far after it was hit so i think the most one uh, the most likely repeated multiple time is is uh, the hit so because the hit it gets repeated three times see so you should return hit in this case because the second one repeated which is the i guess the ball uh repeated two and the rest all of them repeated one and one so you should return uh three so or you should return hit Oh, and the second question will be find first unique character so the idea of this question i'm going to give you a string or something like this one love work later 
and you got to return the first unique character so if you see what first unique character mean the character have not been repeated in the string so if you see l l is get repeated o is get repeated v is not repeated so you should return v this is first unique character there is another unique character such as like w w is not get repeated also but you're going to return the first unique character so you get return the first one and the third question will be uh, about again will be look like this you say find longest substring within a string so that means that means like i'm going to give you a string look like this and you're going to find me longest sub substring within without repeating character so if you look here what without repeating character how many you have a b c d e you get a again so this is the longest string so far so it is like a, a six again if you start if you if you have this a now we will have this is the longest string again six if b b again repeated so we'll have this one six again six until you continue so the longest will be a b c d e f g h i j i think nine okay it just we'll go through it details step by step so i mean this is the three type of problems i'm going to solve in this uh, lesson and we will learn how to use hash map to solve uh, this problem so let's get started with the first problem uh, ever so the first problem as i said uh, it said like hey you have a text and the text said this any text could be and you got to return the uh, most common word the most common words mean the word that appear mo most of the the more than the other words in the strings so the first thing to think about how to solve this problem you just having a uh, you just have a string. So what you have as input is just a string. So what you got to do, you got to convert the strings to array. So you need to split these words. So the first thing I'm I'm doing here, if you see, I'm just first step is just getting these words in the strings and split them. So I have the C, this one. I have Bob hit a ball. The hit ball flow far after it was hit. So this is first thing you do. Okay, I get string. I just need to find the words, so I just split the word in the string. Now I have the words. I, as I can see, there's some words get repeated multiple times. You see, like here, for example, hit it appeared here, then it appeared here, then it get appeared here again. You have a word such as ball, it just hit here and it hit here, or I mean, appeared here and here. So you see, here and here, and the rest they just appear one one. So the way I'm going to what i'm going to do next is just like okay let me have every word and see how many times it appeared so what that mean i mean okay yeah let me build hash map and in this hash map i will just mention the word and how many times it appears so i will get pop search for in the string for the list how many times it appeared one hit how many times return to turn three if you see here and then i just like a how many times one ball how many times two there is one flow one for one after one it's when was one so now i know every word and how many times it appeared in the string i will just get the, um, <laughs> the the one with the max value so looking here what the max value i have in here well i hit so because it has three okay so i will just return it so you see how i break down the problem well it just this is this is how the problem solving work you just like okay i have this problem my biggest problem was just i have a string first thing i got to do with the string is just split the words then after that i will just build a hash map and find every word how many times it appeared then i will just return the most frequent one so i get started with the step by step with this uh, problem so i have i have this simple code the simple code is just you have a text this is the text bob put a ball on the ball the hit ball flow after it was hit and i'm just returning the frequency i'm calling this method i'm sending the text so the text is supposed to be here for now zero doesn't return anything and i'm just appending it so as i said first thing i'm going to do based on my solution here is just like split the words okay to do this in java just it's very simple you just say okay yeah let me just split the words so what we do i say i have a string as an array call it words equal text dot split by space so that's mean what this one will what this line will do 
just simple just take the words as they are and split them as a, a I mean just get a string and split the word in the array so if I just put the breakpoint here try to debug uh, for until now I have nothing because this one have not run yet uh, if I just uh, do this step words if you see like I have a word that's just array I could see it from this side I have this array like Bob hit a ball the hit ball flow after it was hit just just all right okay so just think about it just we just building array okay we just convert see just just array with multiple elements now okay the first step was easy to do was not that hard so we just use a function to split the text maybe in different language using differently but i think most of them have a word have a method called split so now what the next step i'm going to do well i have the word now i need to just like find every word and how many time it appears so to do that i will use a hash map the key will be a string consider a word and the value will be the frequency is just integer so then i go through the string one by one and and i do i will hide my hash map so what i will do here i will say okay yeah i will define my hash map okay hash map in this way and should be the key should be string and the value will be integer and I call it map for now. Will be a call a new hash map. I mean, you could just I could just do hash map this and this one. Okay, it's just very simple, straightforward hash map in Java. So to define hash map in Java, you just say hash map the key uh, the data type for the key. Here I have string because I'm using word as a key. And the value is integer because I want to have frequency. It depends whatever you want. Maybe you have a string, string, integer, integer, integer. So it just depends on the hash map you're building. For now, here I'm building just uh, the key. I want it to be a word and the value should be integer. And I have my map here. Okay. So now I'm just going through this words, word by word. So I will say for uh, integer i equal zero, i less than uh, words dot length then i will do i plus plus then then now i would just have the word is that right i will just have the word one by one so what i'm going to do well i my idea is i get the first word which is like bob what i will do i first look for it in the math if it's there i will return the frequency and i add one for it if it's not there i will just return zero and add one for it what i mean i will say just integer frequency in this way R E frequency will be map dot get or default. I mean get or default is very interesting for me because I'm saying okay yeah try to get me this word from the hash map. If you find it just return the index or uh, return the value for it because this is the key. So I send the key as a word which is Bob. If you find Bob just return. If you don't find it just return zero. Okay which is this will solve a problem for me for now I need to frequency plus plus okay so if the bo uh, bob have not ever been appeared in the in the hash map to return zero for me I'm adding one to it so it will be one and I just put it back okay say map dot put the key will be again same word this one and the value will be the frequency here. okay see how it is and again, since it hash map, when I just put the word again, it will just replace the, the it just replace the uh, previous one that I have it. So this is a very very simple way to to do to solve the problem. I mean, so I could just print here, and I'll show you what's going on here. Like, I want just to print these two, okay? And I'll show you how what I have so far. So I will just say this way, and I will just plus and and a plus so so what's supposed to do now here it will show me the hash map at every single hit so if i just run it i should have like see i have bob one uh hit one a one ball one the one hit now become two because it's just the second time for it but remember since it's this two it will be replaced by this one it will this one will get this one i mean will update this one because i have same key the same key to now by this point hit will be two it will, it will remove this one and i'll add this one now ball is two 
flow one, far one, after one, it's one, was one hit, now become three. So it will just show you like the keys and value, how they get updated over time. Uh, again, this is just show you over time. It doesn't show you the final result because this one, if you see, it just show you hit is a three, ball is two, while if you look here, it show you hit one become two, uh, uh, become three, and the same thing, the ball, it was one, become two, because I'm just going through the array one by one. To do it in, to show you exactly what I have in the example, I would just say for each, uh, centering in the map dot key set, And here I will look for the key because I want to just show, I, I don't want to print it in that way. I want to put it the final result. I don't want to print hit was one, then become two, become three. I want to just show you the final value. So we'll, in this way, I will print the key as a key and the value will be map dot get for the key. And it should now give me exactly what was in the uh, dashboard. So see? I have only one ball with value of three. I have only one hit with value of three. So that is, that's what I mean. So, okay, now I know what is my key. I know what is my value. I would just return the max key with max value. So what I will do, I will say, okay, integer, max key, okay, max key. For now, I have nothing. I don't know what was the max key, max key. integer max value. For now, since I'm looking for max, I will do integer, integer dot min value. Okay, so min value. So since this one is returned for me the key, as I said, I will I will do I will just say okay yeah I will just return value will be whatever in the hash map. So if the value is greater than the max value. I will now, my max value will be value and my max key will be the key, okay? And we'll continue and by the end, what I'm going to return is, let's see, max key will be citring because we define the key as a citring. If you remember here, my max key, here is it, is just uh, sitting so if value is integer so what's wrong here uh, if value is greater than uh, uh, see I'm, I'm just using value with key so the greater than value will be max value equal value or max key equal key and by the end what i'm going to return and i'm just returning the max key okay and this is like a, a just simple thing because we just said uh as we i mean f equal uh, what i'm going to return i'm just i supposed to return an integer here no i don't return integer i'm telling the word so since i'm returning the word i will return a string and this one should be a string not integer because i'm returning the word called hit max key not max value okay so now i should have uh, the, the most frequent word is hit okay because hit is just repeated three times. Again, if you look to this code, it's not very, very complex. You're just going over the hash map as a key and value. So you go over them one by one, and you try to find the key and value with the max. So whenever you get a one has a value here in this one, the frequency is the value, is how many times the value have been seen. Is it greater than the current max? You just update it. And and you continue, continue, continue. So this is the first question. So let's go to the second question and we'll see what we update in this code to get to it. So my second question here is, uh, you just have a, you need to find first unique character in the set ring. So if I just give you like this uh, set ring, you just call it love work later. Uh, well, First thing you need to do is just take these characters and you go over them one by one and you put them in a hash map. So uh, you go through them 
I supplement them, put them in hash map, and you put the frequency how many times being seen. So, for example, one I, it gets seen one two times, O it's seen two times, V is seen one times, and you just build your hash map like every character, how many times they repeated. Previous previous questions we just saying you are finding every word how many time it get repeated. It's very very sim similar. Then. We just go over or we just go over this list and we return the first one or the first uh, character has a key or has a value equal one. So I will just update the code to match the new problem. So so my problem will be low work later. The question well okay and my new method now is just call it a uh, first unique character this one. And should return an integer okay and in this case here I have an integer okay it's called first unique character let's see what going what we're going to change do we need to split uh, the words no we don't because we just need to go over them character by character so this guy will go away now do we need the hash map as a string and integer in this case we need it as a character and and integer why character as an, an integer because the key will be a character and the value will be how many times that key it get repeated okay that's good so now where i'm going i'm going over this one okay so it will be text dot length minus one because i'm going over text and i'm going to take them character by character so i say car c equal text dot car at i i'm just getting it well, I will do same thing here. I'm just lo looking for the default for the uh, a correct word here. I'm looking for default for the character and I'm updating it. It just is the same way. So until here, I just had exactly same code with just simple change here and there. For now, this one is zero. So let's just, this will update for. Now, by the end of this loop, we will have every, uh, uh, every uh, characters and how many times they appear. So what I mean by that, if I just do same what we did previously, if I just have this character, character, and I try to see like how many times every word appeared. So I would say, and uh, will be the key with the plus and uh, map dot get for the key to should show me every or uh, every character how many time it appears so if you see a it appeared one time uh, r repeated one time t one time e two times l one time uh why oh this is l as a capital so a capital and small just <laughs> it doesn't recognize it it was not able to it make everyone is a small so because capital is different than a small so i just Run it again. So now, uh, uh, if we see like, it should show me like A is one, R is one, T is one, E is two, V is one, W is one, K is one, uh, L is one, O is one. So if you just say hey L, how many times repeated? Uh, two. So I don't take it. O, how many times repeated? Uh, two times. V, how many times repeated? Uh, one. So even there is multiple characters repeated. One times I should return the first one. So I guess you got it here. So to do this, you just do same loop for the previous one for integer i equal. You would just copy it if you want. So I won't let you just copy this. You just because I'm doing same loop and I'm going over the characters character by character. So you would just do same what I did here. Okay. Then. If, if the character that I found it, if I say uh, an integer, I would say if the map dot get for the character is equal equal one, just return that index. Return return uh, that index, which is in this case i. Otherwise, return minus one. So if you don't find anything, just return minus one. That's the rule. So let's see how that one works. So I have two because the first index is zero, one, two. V is the first one did not repeat. If I just add another V, so V should not be returned as a first character. I think in this case, W will be maybe. Uh, well, 
Okay, so uh, here. Uh, wait a second. Uh, zero, one, two, because I have another V, so I should. Uh, why is that? See, it just stored it here on V, even the V I just repeated. Repeated again. So let's see what I did, what I did wrong here. If I just try to uh, see hashmap.key for that given key or has a value equal one, return i, whatever that index, otherwise return uh, minus one. And what I am doing in above, maybe I just missed something. Uh, if I just try to see uh, the key and value, so, so instead doing this, let's see, let me see what the keys and values I have for everyone. So I would say key, I just did that, but and map dot get for for the key, okay. And the key in this case will be C, okay. So let's see how many times I have every character without returning. I want to just see like if I did something wrong. So I have oh V is still showing as a one. Even V is being seen two times. I mean, what does that mean? Oh, I, I just don't have a V. Let me just put the V again here. Love here, there. And let's run it again. Uh, where is V? A v is still 1. So I equal 0, then I minus I plus plus. Okay, I, I think I, I know what's wrong. I just, I said I minus 1 minus this minus 1. I should take it off because I'm, I'm, I'm losing the last character. Okay, I should not lose the last character. So I should keep uh, the last character also. So I have a minus one now is the return value because I don't have a return. So if I just deactivate it, and uh, let me just disable this part and see what's going on because I'm just I'm not going over the other strings. So now I have a four because zero, one, two, three because W is the first one. I added V. If I just remove V, if I, I should have a two as a return. So yeah. So my problem was I'm just not going over all the string. Okay. So let's go to the third part of this problem. And this problem will, we will call it the longest substring. So let's see what the longest substring is about. So longest substring is just like, okay, I give you a set string with a character like this one, A, B, C, D, whatever. And you got to take this string and you got to return the longest one. So the longest one will be, I guess, here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, without repeating any character. So how we solve this problem? Well, it's very similar to the previous ones, just a different way of handling the problem. We just get the characters one by one. Whenever you get any character, what you're going to do, you save the index for. So I get A, index zero, B, index one, and the hash map, C, two, D, three, E, four, F, five. I get A, and I have A. So I have here A and I have A here. And as, I, as we said, the longest substring should be the substring doesn't have repeated character. So I should get the length from this one to this one. It's very simple. The index of the previous A with the current A. So the current A is six index for it. The, the previous A, the index for it is zero. So six minus zero is, is zero. Same thing, B. Um, I get B. Oh yeah, I have B. I have B already in hash map. So I will say seven minus one is six and update the key with the new value and continue. And I should have always the, the longest, I mean, I will have the longest substring. So let's just update it here and see how we will handle this case. I mean, my method name now is changed to be longest substring here. And let we just don't take all this mess, okay? Let we just consider we don't we have just hash map, just empty hash map. If you th think about it, you just even don't have hash map, okay? So we could start clearly. So I have nothing. All what I have is just input a string. As I said, I need to go over the string element one by one and save the index in the hash map. So that's mean I need to define I need to define a hash map, okay? So what I will do, I will just say hash map with character as integer and map I define it this way. So I need to go then over the string integer i equals zero i less than the text dot length not minus one i plus plus 
then I will just okay I'm going through characters character by character so how that one work well forever I just get the character character call uh, text dot car at the index so I'm getting the character what I will do well there is multiple way to handle this scenario you could you we could say if the map dot contain contains key uh, contains key with uh, C if the map has that key already what I'm going to do I'm just saying like okay I have integer index uh, integer len will be equal uh, the current index and in this case the current index is I minus the map uh, map dot get for the C and and I should always have the max length so I should have an integer max length will be equal to integer uh, integer and integer dot min value okay and as I said here since it's min value I will say okay yeah mm, max length will max length will equal math dot max between the len uh, between the max len and len so between max length and len and by the end I will just I would just always uh, return whatever the max len and beside that I'm um, um, beside I'm doing that I need just to update uh, the value because here I'm saying okay yeah I am getting the key it just you, you we just make it so much complex when we use contain and all these things I think the easiest way is just using using the get or default so I say integer index and I say map dot get or defaults so try to get me this character as a key if you do not find it return to me minus one now I'm checking if it's minus one that is mean if the index is minus one what that mean that's mean the the he did not find that key so that's key uh, uh, is not is not f I mean if the if it, if it equal minus one that mean did not find it if it not equal minus one that's mean it find it so instead getting this again I will just say minus the index okay minus index in this way and it's just like I'm calculating the map then all what I'm doing I'm just always saying map dot put whatever uh, I have a character and whatever the new index are and what that mean well we said like I should my hash map should always have the car the last character index in the list so if I should the hash map I have in this point I have a, the key a and the value zero and here should be the key a and value six and here if there's another a I have should have the a uh, the key is a and the value is 15 so I need to keep my mind I when I'm going in the loop all the time I keep a track the key with the with the last uh, value or with the last index but only in case I found this key that means I have seen this key in the string before in that case I will just subtract whatever f current index from the last time I see it and the same what we do here like just like a at 6 like minus a at 0 and I will just add it uh, as a lane then I do this calculation so let's see if, <laughs> if everything work yeah it's work 6 so uh, that's that's my main I mean this is how we solve the problem or handle the problem I wish that was clear enough and um, thank you for watching and see you next again I have this question from Amazon phone screen interview and the question is you have an array of numbers for, for example 1 3 5 5 6 6 7 8 10 10 you should return only the number that unique that never repeated for example in this array 1 is not repeated 3 is not repeated uh, 5 is repeated you don't take it 6 repeated don't you don't take it 7 is not re repeated 8 is not repeated 10 10 is repeated
So what they tell you, they tell you, hey, the, you send this number to this function with get unit number, and then print whatever the output for that function. So let's suppose you're supposed to write code here to return only the unique number on the array. So think about this problem, how you solve it, the best solution. Well, the best solution is you just design a hash map and you put the number and when you get the number again, you increase the frequency, then you return only the number that has a frequency of one. That's mean you have a hash map, or hash map, not hash set, Hash and the hash. Oh, okay. Hash map. What? And the hash map take two inputs. First of all, the key, which be the number, which type of integer, and the value, which be the frequency, also the type of integer. You name it list of numbers. Okay, will be equal in your instance of the hash map. So what you will do, you will get this array, you iterate it through this array element by element. So you say for integer i equals zero, i less than the length of this array, and i plus plus. You get that, you get them element by element. So how you how you do that? First of all, you get the element, for example, array for i, and you need to make sure if this element in the hash map or not. So you would say, you say if the hash set dot get for that number, you have it for that key. If you get something, that means this number uh, uh, in the set. If you don't get it, that means you have the number. You have it already. I mean, already appear before. If not, you just give it as a new instance. Uh, uh, you just create it, create a new instance. You say put whatever as a key will be whatever the array you have it, and the value will be one. What that mean? That means if you see the element for first time, for example, you get one, you put one in, uh, in the in the hash map with a frequency of one. When you get the one again, you will you will go here because you find it. That means you have something. So you say while is not equal null. That means you you have that element. If you have that element, first of all, you need to get the frequency of that element. Maybe maybe it appeared before one time, or maybe it appeared ten times. So you do whatever, you just get that, get the frequency for it, and you just update it. You say list of numbers dot put whatever array is still same array for element i, and the frequent the value will be whatever the frequency you have it plus one. That's mean frequency you could say frequency plus one. Okay. So when you he get one, you will have one in the array. When you get one again, what you will have, you will have two in the array for that one. Okay, that's good. So now what I need to do, just do for each the element, for each, it's not ant integer, you could say for each key, integer for any key, or you could say any number in the, uh, in the list of numbers, dot keys the keys here will represent the number and the value will represent the frequency so you say if the list of numbers dot uh, get for the number equal equal one that's mean you see it for first time you get it otherwise you don't get it what you see here we are returning uh, a list of number array list so it's better here, here you define it you name it return re, return uh, numbers so this is your array list that you will return it for the user set so in this case this one this one will be what we will return so here I will add dot add I will add whatever the number is okay very straightforward solution now if I just run it I would assume he will return 1, 3, 8, 7. See? He did not return any repeated, he did not return on 5. If I say 5, I have it one time, it should return on 5 as well. If I put 5 again, it should not return on 5. If I put 1 here, should not return on 1 anymore because it's see it two times. So very, very stressful solution. If you see, I just the solution here is the for loop take n times, the lookup, 
in the hash map it depends if, if the implementation is too big for the hash map then the, the lookup will be one otherwise the lookup will be in so i will assume the implementation is big so the lookup is one so it's constant time so all this is constant so the solution was o of one so we solve it in o of one o of n sorry so are we done thank you for watching and see you next hey and welcome in this video i will solve a problem that i got it in amazon interview the problem was this if you have a text find the important word in the text so you want to know the the person who wrote the who wrote the text what is the most word that he falls on so this type of algorithm in machine learning we name it key phrasing like you find the important word in the text so just to get started I want to analyze this problem. So how I could find important words? First of all, I find every word in the text and I find how many times this word repeated. And the word that get repeated more, that means this word is more important. So if this one like repeated 10 times and this one five times, so this one is more important. But there are some words I had to exclude them because these words it's like could appear in any text which is the conjunction words like for example we have a of and to is this is this is words like it appear in any text so this is not important words so we'll solve this problem using uh what do you think what's the best solution for this problem hash map for sure the hash map is the best solution for this problem so to get started i will create a new package i will name it com dot enter view com com dot interviews okay and in interviews i will create first one which is was for amazon interview i will name it a key phrases okay key phrases and make sure I create the main method and bam, I have it. This is my main method. So the text that I have it, I could define it as a string here in this way. I say, okay, I have this text, which is this one that I showed to you before a few seconds. This text, what I did to save my time, I changed it to single line and, and I save it in variable. So to make the, you understand the problem easily. So now this is my my text that I want to search I, or I want to find the important word in this text. Well, the second thing I have to do, I have to define or predefine the uh, words that I need to exclude from the search, which I said the conjunction and other things. So I will define array list. OK, array list. This array list for with suturing should be words to exclude okay word that i want to exclude i could say new array list whatever a new array list so this is the word that i need to exclude and i have to add the list of the word that i need to exclude so i say Words dot add. What's the first word I want to exclude? For sure, that. Then I continue write all the other words that I need to exclude. To save my time, I will just paste these words. I just I know these words in the string, which is a, the, two, and or this one, this one, and is. So these words I could exclude them from the string because this is not important words. So this is the exclude words. Okay, so. To find how many times every word repeated, it's better thing to use a hash map, so have a word uh, as a key and as a value have the frequency. I mean, how many times we did see that word. Like for example, suppose, for example, we see it in the string one time. For example, text, see it in the string 10 times, and that is. So a very easy way, I would define hash map in this way. So the hash map, will have two things. First one is the key, which is suturing, and the value, I would suppose integer because it means the frequency. 
jar okay and I will name it word frequency and I could do it in new whatever a new hash map so this is my hash map holes so uh, to search now how I will search first of all I need I have this string I need to split the string by word word I find all the word the string the better way to split it using the split function I say string as text sp will be equal to text dot split I will split this text according the space so now by the end this text will have array of the all the word in the text so if I say for each for each the for each string or for each word in this text I could print them I could say s y s o and I print them as a word here I print the word and I could also here do s y s o the text so first of all I print the text then I print them word by word in every single line so if I just run it you would see this is my text as a first line and this is every word in the text if you see suppose we then have then add then 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 then, then. this is all the word that text so what I want to do for every word I have to make sure first of all if this word is part of from the exclude so I say okay if uh, the execute dot contain the this word that's mean this word I don't need it I will not include it in my search so I will say continue so that's mean okay if you find any word so this is no longer needed if you find any word that's part of from the execute dot include so when he come here he see a he will continue he will not include it in my search so then I will continue what if it's not part of from the execute now I want to process it so how I process the word that is not part from the execute the process is not very hard it is very very easy and straightforward so you see you will do it in this way we say okay if if you see this one has a list of the words and a frequency so I check this if get for the key or the word we could name it here the word I prepare to name it key I define key citrine key and I prefer to take this word and do so do trim to remove all the empty space in the two side then to lower to make sure all them in the same case because they have a case sensitive so I get the word convert it to the lower remove the space and get as a key so if this key is equal equal null that is mean I don't have this word yet so I could just put it I say okay I want to put this word the word as or the key and the value should be one but that's mean the frequency is when I just see it for the first time else that's mean I already have this word and I already have it in my in my search I already have it before so first of all I need to get the frequency okay frequency okay and the frequency I say get for that key now I have the frequency all what I need to do just update it I say word frequency dot put for key and the value should be this frequency very very easy process so what we did here okay we get we did a loop for every word if the word part from the execute I don't need it just go if this word is not part from the execute what I have to do just convert it to lowercase remove the empty space check if I have it in my hash map that's mean in this way draw string so that what we did is this here we check hey do you have it in the hash map that's mean this is, if we suppose this is hash map if we check the word is this word here if it's not here I just add it and I give the frequency one if it's here if it's not here if it's here if it's here like for example he find this word same word again he just updated to two which is this part so very easy and straightforward process now the word the frequency will have list of the words and how many times every word being seen in the citrate so if I just go outside the loop this is my loop I say for uh, if I say for uh, citrate key in what 
in word frequency dot get keys or key set all the keys in the here so all what need I need to do I want to print the key and the value I just want to show you the thing so I say so I so so I would say the key and a plus then the value for the word to exclude dot get the value okay the value for the key now if I just run it what you would see you would see here you would see we have this is empty space she see it one time it's better to ignore these things but you see it one time document one documents one document one and these all these one 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 I think he, uh, I think he was able to show you how many times every words did appear but uh, we may have we may have problem here with the frequency so what's the problem uh, why I don't see all the word like such, such document I see it text is the text part from the exclude no so where's the text here as you see text here so now so everything is fine so on this string doesn't have the it doesn't have repeated words so now just make sure avoid the the word with empty so I say okay if, if it's an include continue or the len the key for the len word dot len uh, equal, equal zero or I could say dot trim to avoid fit only space so just av av I just want, don't want to see this space so I just I want to run it so if you see here every words and how many times this word did appear in the settering like documents let me suppose I repeat the word documents documents just make convert it to document if, make sure if he shout to us as a two so if I just go back here okay still everything here as a one okay so on something going here something wrong going here if I say key and value ops I got the problem the problem here I'm doing everything as this me just I return this one as a documents the problem here if it's one I get the value if it, I see it for the first time I give it value one but if I see it for the second time whatever the value I have it plus one so whatever the value I have it plus one and update it here as a new frequency so if I see here I may see the words on how many times it sees if you see documents I see it two times co see it two times and the other words so now I, w I was able to find the frequency for every word and how many times we did see this word in the set rings, which is really good. Now I want just to have the frequency, uh, or frequ the highest frequency. So to get the highest frequency, what I will do, I will, will define here variable. I name it uh, the max frequency equal zero. We start with zero. So and here we check, we say hey, if the frequency for this one is greater than, I mean, I mean, I say if the word, the word that we have it, or the frequency dot get for the key greater than the max frequency, I want you to update the max frequency with this key, with the key value. So always. The max frequency will have the highest frequency in the in the data. Now here, if I, when I want to print, I don't want to print all these. I say if the whatever the word frequency dot get for the key equal equal the max frequency printed. I will see what's the important words. So if you see the important words in the documents repeated two times, which was documents, co, brown. Okay? This is the three important words in the text. So did you see how we solve the problem? It's not that hard. First of all, we define the set rings. Then we define the word that we need to exclude. Then 
we separate the setting word by word then any word that part of from execute word you will not include in the search or the, the or the mpt space don't include in the search then for every word we get it converted to small letter remove to space convert to small letter check if we have it in the hash map if you don't have it in the hash map we give it value one if we have it we get the old value and increase it by one add it in the or update it update the value then we will continue and always we keep it track the max frequency we have it in the hash map when we done from this we pr we go iterate through the hash map and we print only the max frequency so here we done thank you for watching and see you next